if we do succeed in breaking any whiskies tonight, know that we're doing it so that you may not have to. Let's get started. Roddy, my friend, what is the first thing <laughs> that we're going to be breaking this evening? Um, so we're making a Rob Roy to start with, one of my favourite uh, whiskey cocktails. Um, and if you look up Rob, Rob Roy recipes on the internet or in a, a book, um, then it will say Scotch whiskey and vermouth. So Scotch whiskey, White and Mackay. Um, but we're not going to use that tonight. Uh, oh! <laughs> what we have here is a single cask Ardna Merkin. Um, so this is the Ardna Merkin adventure. Wow. Um, of course, why not? <laughs> well, it's a whiskey adventure. Um, so need to use a sharp knife to get the foil off. Professional at work. Professional at work. Okay, so hey, <laughs> a Rob Roy um, would normally be two parts whiskey to one part vermouth, but because this is a cask strength whiskey, uh, then we do it the other way around. So we take a hundred mils of Ardna Merkin. Um, The chat is already christening this the Rod Roy. <laughs> and now that you've opened that and I know the whiskey that it is, I've actually tried that at Ardna Merkin. It's a wee cracker. Uh, we take 50 mils of vermouth, cocky de Torino. Um, Super. We take three or four dashes of Reagan's bitters, orange bitters. Um, and we stir that for 30 seconds. So the point of stirring it um, is so that the drink's chilled, because it's part of the pleasure of a cocktail, it's a nice icy cold drink, Super. but also to dilute it slightly. Because it was, it was cast strength whiskey. <laughs> so normally, I, I know that I'm meant to be explaining what I'm doing. Normally, I would do this in silence, because I count the, the stirs. Um, and how many stirs does it take? A, well, I count 60, because oh, wow. it's roughly 30 seconds. So I'm going to say that that must be about 30 seconds. Long. But of course, when you're making a, a cocktail. Oh. A good chef always samples before <laughs> serving, right? Oh, it's glorious. This has been a long time coming. I'm looking forward to this. There we go. One. And two. Don't want to waste any, seems it's single past out of the And then garnish with a maraschino cherry. There we go. So, are you... Oh, crap. Let's get started. We're good to go? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, everybody. This is a wee bit of a celebration tonight. Not only are we going to be playing with whiskey and trying to break whiskey, but this... I be careful of the jaggy edges. <laughs> That's a good start. This is the first time, and we can see we're out of practice, this is the first time that I've had somebody sitting next to me in the V-pub for almost two years. Negative uh, lateral flow tests 
a, an air purifier running the corner, a well ventilated room. <laughs> Nonetheless, it, it feels good for me. Aye, it feels aye. good for me to be able yes, to look across aye. and see somebody here. But obviously, there's millions of you guys here as well. You have to be careful with these wee jaggy <laughs> edges that we have. <laughs> Fantastic. So good to see everyone and I hope you're all doing very, very well tonight. It's going to get quite warm in here, so I'll crank that fan up just a wee bit. Can we just say cheers? Oh, right. absolutely. To, this has to be fresh, right, as well? Aye. You want it to be as cold as possible. Cheers. It's Chin been chin. christened the Rod Roy, you know that. Oh. Right? <laughs> cheers, everyone. Cheers. Here's to us. Hmm. Right, this is a terrific start. That's a lot We've failed day. at the beginning. No, <laughs> nothing, nothing is broken here. <laughs> but this is, this is not a sweet drink. This is sour and bitter, isn't it? The yeah. So the the vermouth um, is has got wormwood in it. Um, the if it doesn't have wormwood in it, it's it's not vermouth. Vermouth is. I think like the Italian word for for work for wormwood, wormwood, for. Uh, and it's got herbs in it. And then the, the bitters that that were that, were, that I added also have various bittering ingredients: uh, wormwood and gentian, and and I guess maybe chicory, bitter orange peel. So it balances the sweetness. Uh huh. So the, the bitter orange peel, all of that kind of all of those flavors are definitely there. Is the cherry actually doing anything? I, I'm not getting much in the, the way. But... I I drained the cherries. Uh, so, because like you can take them straight out of the jar, and then you get a little bit of the syrup, and that mixes in. But the for me, one of the joys of a Rob Roy is that you drink the drink, and then you get a cherry. Mm. <laughs> That's one of the things I love about martinis, dry martinis, and is yeah, the, the, the olive. olive. Absolutely, yeah. the treat of the so, olive. Uh, so I would say that that's a very good, very tasty start. I need to be careful tonight because that's a very, very delicious, easy way to drink quicker than I normally would, I think. I wonder if, if cocktails would do that. I mean, it's, it is, and it's the, because it's cold, it, it's quite Moorish. It's quite refreshing and mm -hmm, cold. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a cocktail is a, the origin of a cocktail was something that, that would, you know, get the juices going, you know, that you would have one before dinner. Or something. Do that. Like the, the the earliest cocktails would be would be just a, something bitter, you know? Mm. The like a herbal thing that, that, that was that was that was sort of healthful, supposedly. Uh, but also would, would make you salivate and would make you appreciate your, your getting you your ready for your food. meal. Mm -hmm. That's so this that, is safe. I mean I don't know if, if if it's certainly not making me hungry, but it's certainly making me think more than I expected. I think cocktails for me has always been something that you drink in order to be as easy and enjoyable uh, and easy drinking as possible. But there's actually, this is sour, uh, it's it's bitter. It's almost, is there a wee bit of a coffee lick to this as well? Like almost like a wee kind of cold coffee thing. Um, and and what, what is wormwood? I'm going to come in and I'll, I'll grab all you guys in, in the chat in just a wee minute where um, I'm, I'm struck here by the, by this. This is a, there is a woodiness to it. Mm -hmm. So from the vermouth, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean that's and that's interacting with the oak component of the the Arden Merkin. Um And this, you know, that like I said, the uh, Rob Roy is my absolute favourite um, uh, cocktail. So I've made <laughs> the this this is this is a. Uh, a friend and, and customer uh, who's tied, who's uh, lockdown project was learning tie dye. Um, he seems to have done a, a pretty so good job. He, he made so many tie dyes, but he, he kind of perfected the Glen Cairn tie dye. Yeah, uh, yep. and made one for me because because uh, I'd I'd been admiring his, his his work and I said you know I would love that my Glen Cairn glass. So he, he went away and made several a perfect Glen Cairn yeah. tie dye. That's the, the but you know what the deal was that. He said when he gave me the T-shirt, "You have to give me a whiskey that tastes like this." <laughs> well, so I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, but I, I, I gave him six. I gave him a tasting back, like you know, six different whiskeys that 
to cover the flavours, you know. So. And then maybe he could practice and break them and make his own <laughs> wee blend. <laughs> so you were, you were just talking there, um, yeah. and I'm going to come into the chat and I'll welcome you guys all in just a wee second, but you've made this to, to start things tonight because, well, let's rewind a wee bit because it's your favourite or one of your favourites. But you mentioned this on one of the previous Roddy uh, appearances on the VPUB, and I don't remember which VPUB it was. You talked about making a Rob Roy and how you would make a Rob Roy. And tonight you've talked about making a Rob Roy as a reverse Rob Roy. So specifically, why is this different? What makes it a reverse Rob Roy? Um, well, so the like a good cocktail should have real balance to it. So the and because the Arden Merkin's a cask strength whiskey, um, so the 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 classic Rob Roy recipe is two parts whiskey, one part vermouth and the bitters. But if you use a cask strength whiskey to to uh, in those proportions, yep. then it's it's burny. It's as, good night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it does. It's just all you get is a big hit of alcohol. Yeah. So and I've uh, you know I've been making Rob Roy's for a decade, and I've I've learned that that. If you're using cash strength whiskey, then you, you, make, you just make a reverse. Like if you used a forty percent whiskey and made the reverse, then that would be a light summary drink. Yes, you know Aye, that's interesting. But, this... but because this is cash strength, it brings it back to the kind of classic Rob Roy path. You know? And if I'm right about the Ardnamurchan single cask that you used, I don't know if I did try it, but I tried cast samples before it was picked, and I think it had already been picked then, and it was between. An Oloroso and a PX cask, I think. Is that a PX cask? I need to run upstairs. <laughs> I, I think it is. Um, um, and, and, but I mean, so have you have you made it with that whiskey before, or do you just you have? Uh, yeah. So the Graham, uh, like we were the exclusive retailer for the Adventure bottle. Is that right? Uh, yeah. The charity yeah. bottle. Yeah. So Graham very kindly gave us a sample. Graham Mackay. Graham Mackay. Yeah. From yep. from uh, Arthur Merkin. Uh, so of course. Having a, a sample to play with, uh, the first thing I did was was to make a Rob Roy. Um, but I knew, I kind of knew uh, uh, straight away because it was cast strength, it would need to be a reverse. Uh, and uh, I think I played it, I think I maybe changed the bitters. Uh, it's, it's gorgeous, Roddy. It's, it's, a, it's, it's delicious. It's, it's delicious. Um, I've made, like, like I say, I've made Rob Roy's with... Lefroy, eighteen-year-old, when that was a thing. Uh, See, this is this is what we need to get into tonight <laughs> because I know that there are folk in the lounge tonight having connections we, because you've just uncorked a really special, fairly hard to get your hands on bottle, right? And the first thing that you've done with it is is thrown some vermouth in it and and stirred it for but it tastes thirty great. seconds. It tastes great. And this is, I think, what we need to get to. This is what we all need to just kind of. Relax a wee bit and talk about this throughout tonight. It's Connell. See, we are Connell McKenzie's in. Yeah, five times unpeated octaves vatted together. What? Ah, okay. So this is maybe different from what I'm thinking about, Connell. Hey, let's see who's who's in tonight. Let's see. Remember, anybody that's trying to get my attention, I'll do my best tonight. But I've got a buddy back in the V Pub again, so uh, it's nice to have this dynamic back again. Um, it's really really cool to feel like we're getting back to normality. <laughs> Jimmy Legs saying only neat Arden and Merkin would taste better. This, <laughs> Jimmy, you need to you need to taste this drink, mate. You need to taste this drink. Hey, listen, one of the first things I'm going to do when Jimmy Leg actually hey, breaks ground in Scotland is bring him in. And, hey, what a character! But I, I, if there's any kind of comments like that going to come in tonight, it's going to be from the Jimmy Legs people. Like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? But it's fine. Let's talk about it. And like we say, Jimmy, let let us do it so that maybe you don't have to. But I don't consider that sacrificing a pour of Ardnamurchan. I consider that enhancing it, elevating it for this occasion, for this moment. There's a full bottle of it there. Mm -hmm. We can go pour by pour to analyse it, you know, ad nauseum, right, in the future. This is a fantastic way to christen a brand new bottle. And you've obviously done the homework on the sample beforehand. Anyway, if you're trying to get a hold of, if you're trying to get my attention, just type Aquavite. And it should flash up orange here for Roddy and I to be able to read. Can you read that okay? I can, yes. I... Good. Um, Thomas Elmer is in. Good to see you. Are you going to make a rusty nail? There's another few wee drinks to play with tonight, Tom. Uh, I don't think a rusty nail's on the card tonight, but I fully predict that this may become a series. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey Mystery Phil is in. He's saying that, lo that, sh 
That shirt could be a long row red. That's really interesting That's because good shirt. Whiskey Mystery Phil reviews whiskey on YouTube with his with his partner Deepa. But instead of a flavor map, he will paint pictures of color on paper to represent what he's getting in the whiskey. Wow, that that's because because Derek that made the T-shirt. That's he um, does. Uh, they look like you know the earthquake graphs. Uh -huh, absolutely, yeah. But with yeah. but colors, but so colors. It's like the the sequence of colors he gets as he tastes the whiskey. But, but this is one of the things that we talk about when we drink whiskey that we can sometimes taste more than a flavor we can taste a sense of color i think when mm. we drink whiskey there are some whiskeys that are quite clearly red there are some whiskeys that are yellow or, or light green and Aye. all of these things it's uh, you know a briny whiskeys to me can taste pale blue and, and crazy things like that i wonder what a briny whiskey tastes like to you briny. there's a color a briny uh -huh. like a kalila or something i a talisker or a yeah or a, no kalila is very often blue for me i i yeah. see kalila is maybe a, a kind of a greeny yellow to me, yeah. and maybe teal. Maybe we could go towards teal, teal a bit, a bit of teal. <laughs> anyway, it's getting silly already. Teal. Um, so that's interesting, Phil, that you spotted that because when I saw his t shirt and he was talking about it tonight, you popped into my head that you're the drawings that you and the paintings that you do alongside the whiskey. Some take notes, some try and visualize it. Fantastic. Connell's saying, eh, Yes, this isn't the cask you're thinking of. Shh. Oh. Oops. Gab's drama saying that T-shirt is a wee beastie. <laughs> Love the star showing the white guy off, taking it away, and out comes the special <laughs> Adam Merkin. But listen, Che, you're from here, buddy. You know what the white Mackay is all about. And normally, if we're if you're doing things like this in whiskey, we would be reaching for our white Mackays to have our whiskey cocktails or whatever. Or most folk would. I like white and Mackay. Uh, that's right. Well, I, I don't particularly like that bottle, right. but it's got its place and it's got the things that it can do. Um, <laughs> I think that if you made a, a, a like for like, that made the, everything else the exact same thing, I don't think this would taste anything like as nice yeah, as it does. Yeah, it'd be really uh -huh. It would be lighter and probably easier to drink. I wonder if it works the same way then with, if you're drinking very light drinks, it's easy just to throw them back and forget about what you're drinking. Mm -hmm. But the higher ABV is, neat whiskies especially, it, the, the strength of the ABV forces you to slow down, like a strong beer. You know, a nine or ten percent beer. You you mm -hmm. can't not. You have to eat that. Basically, you're thinking about every sip, every yeah, every yeah, sip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the same thing's happening here. Although I predict I'm going to tear through this rather quickly. Listen, you'll see that there's a pinned comment tonight. Thank you to everybody that buys me virtual drams. I really do appreciate it. Thank you all so much. But if you're thinking about it tonight, I'm going to drop the link in as I always do. Uh, but it's up at the top of your screen there as well. Um, and that is Luca Tevin's uh, Kidney Kids Scotland appeal. Um, the Barflies have been super, super generous with this thing. I'm really blown away by you all. It's pinned at the top, but I'll pin it here again. If anybody wants to um, make a donation there tonight, please don't keep your uh, donation anonymous. Type that you're a Barfly. I'll be, I'm going through all of the donations that's made there, and I'm going to pick out uh, two names and I'm going to give you something as a, as a thank you for donating. Um, I've got two bottles over my shoulder here. Not the Iron Brew. <laughs> um, the Iron Brew's too that's, precious. That's, that's for later. <laughs> well, as, it, it might be. Um, we've got, this up. <laughs> yes, we need dash Iron Brew in the top. Uh, we've got some uh, a fairly new, this This is a new Compass Box, yeah, this yeah, Orchard yeah. House. Uh, this was originally brought to my attention from Scotty Monroe. Who bought a bottle of it and loved it tore through it very quickly and bought a replacement so i've bought this and i in indeed am enjoying this this is young whiskey it's very bright it's very clean and fresh there's a lovely puff of smoke right on the tail um easy to drink whiskey easy to enjoy and another example of what blended malt can do especially the guys at compass box so i've got a bottle of that up there to give away and there's another bottle along next to it that I'm going to give away too, and we'll talk about it a wee bit later because it's going to end up in one of our drinks tonight as well. Um, so please don't keep your donations anonymous. If you want to have a chance of winning the, this whiskey, please let us put in, type in Barfly, call yourself, you know, Roy Barfly Duff or whatever it may be, and I can recognize you if I don't recognize your name. If you're in a place that I cannot legally ship whiskey to you, apologies, but I'll make a wee care package of non-alcoholic items and ship that instead. 
nobody's going to be left out. Thank you very, very much for supporting Luca. We have an 11-year-old boy who's been through his transplant. He's doing fine now, but the parents realised just how much support was needed through such a stressful, stressful time. And they've decided to get together through uh, Gordon and Gus, two barflies. Uh, and they're doing uh, various fundraising activities, whiskey tasting, shaving their heads, dressing up as Santa, doing all sorts of things um, in order to raise money for Kidney Kids Scotland. So any donation, any wee dram that you would normally buy me, send it over their way this evening. Uh, thank you very, very much. Thanks for all your support. And thanks to you as well, Roddy. Oh, time for a dram. Gregor's chiming in to say there's, we've got a technical issue already. There's something wrong with your video, fella. Roddy's shirt look like, looks like it's on fire. Recalibrate, please. That's, it is quite bright, isn't it? Aye. aye. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I think it's smashing. Yeah. And I think it suits Roddy. It's certainly a perfect Roddy shirt. Fantastic. Um, eh, <laughs> Daniel Vermassa saying, care package, lifetime supply, iron brew. Not quite, Daniel. That stuff's <laughs> pretty precious here. Whiskey Radar is saying, evening, Roddy. So excited about the abominations you will create tonight. <laughs> My biggest desecration once was a Yamazaki 18 topped with 10% Red Bull. Result, complete death of the Yamazaki. Roland, that is super interesting. Let's start this wee discussion. Uh, well, we drain our wee Rob Roy here, or, or a Rod Roy, as this is becoming known. Some people, me included, were precious about our malt whiskies, right? Mm -hmm. We've been captivated by flavour, by variation in flavour, and we're, we're drinking it out of our fluted glasses so that we can capture the aromas, so that we can um, behold this wonderful nectar as we hold it in our glass. And we can get so precious about it that we're reluctant to give any of it up mm -hmm. to experimentation whether that's even in the extremes through mis misinformation and misunderstanding, I think, even to the point that people won't add drops of water to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Over time, I have been, and I think through osmosis from hanging about with people like you and people that have really, really passionate ideas and a lot of knowledge about whiskey, but also different ideas about how to enjoy what whiskey is and what it brings to us. And I've realized that maybe not, I don't know about Roland's Yamazaki 18 there. I've only ever had Yamazaki 18 once. But maybe to the point that we are actively choosing malts, guide me here, to flavor these drinks. The malt is not something that's being damaged or diluted. The malt is actually, and in this case, I can taste it. The malt is bringing something unique and powerful to this drink. Is that a haver or is that right? Why would you pick an Arnamurkin instead of the white and Mackay that you had up there? Um, so the every component of the drink brings something to the drink. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's an absolute truism that we, if you want to make something good, you use the best components, the best ingredients. The best ingredients, right, okay. You know, the, the, and, so, th th where this started for me is that 10 years ago or so, uh, I was asked to write an article about whiskey cocktails for some publication. Um, yeah. And at that point, I was not nearly as far along in my whiskey journey, so I had to do a bit of reading, basically. Um to to find some and I, everywhere I looked it said a Rob Roy it, all it said was scotch yes and I was like I was far enough just, at, just a generic statement I was far scotch. enough uh, yes I was far enough sorry I'm bumping your that's all right, uh, all right I was far enough along in the journey to be able to say wait a minute scotch what do you mean what you know uh you need to that's that's like saying whiskey, right? Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, it's, yeah. it's such a broad brush statement. So right? yep. so the I was like, okay, well I'll, I'll I'll I've got X bottles open in the house just now. I'll, I'll make Rob Roy's with all of them and and see what happens. And they were all different, you know. Um, I think that at that point I did have a bottle of Lefroy eighteen, um, and that was that was head and shoulders better than than all the others. Because uh, it was obviously the Lef the Lefroy's a big shouty whiskey, but by the time it's eighteen years old, it's 
It's mellow, it's mellow just rounded. You know, yep. the, the, yep. the, you know, when it gets to that age, the smoke kind of yes, you don't get it initially. It comes on the finish, you know. Yes, absolutely. And then that just that piqued my interest, and since then I've just it's been one of my favourite drinks, and I've just always tended to whatever bottles open. At some point, I'll make a Rob Roy with it, you know. And the more I've done this, the more I've seen that. The, the better the whiskey, the more interest in the Rob Roy, the you know. Cocktail. The, and I just think that that uh, you know, like chefs will tell you that the you know, like posh restaurants, they they, they source the the best ingredients and they produce the best meals. In the same way, if you want to make a, a really good um, mixed drink, you use the best ingredients. Yeah. But it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You, it's it's much the same way as that putting together a whiskey, isn't it? Is that you, in order to get the best whiskey, you have to have, have been super super careful every stage across the way for it for it to be the best it possibly can be coming out still. Mm -hmm. And you need to put it in a decent cask. It mm -hmm. needs to be. You need to focus on the ingredients. So mm -hmm. it makes mm -hmm. sense that in order to put together something, it's going to be super enjoyable here. I'm I'm amazed at how much I'm enjoying this. I'm amazed. Yeah, and then the the second thing i would say is that um like i i personally believe that scotch whiskey is the most complex spirit in the world um or, or specifically maybe, scotch yeah or maybe not maybe not the most complex but that it's got the, the widest spectrum of flavors Absolutely, because, the, yeah. because there's so many distilleries and there's so many ways of making scotch you know the you yep. know, the, there's so many more variables compared with any other kind of whiskey making. And you're then that's without adding any other ingredient. You're just talking about the barley itself is enough to give that. It's, it's the, fascinating, absolutely. It, yeah. yeah. So the so then that means that uh, if if you if you only had one ver vermouth in the world, you could make 140 different. Yes. Rob Roy's, you know, yes. at least 140 because I've got some distilleries. I've got, you know, like Springbank's got Long Row, yeah, Springbank Hazelburn, and so on. Um, and the, 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 taking that fact, or I call it a fact that that Scotch whisky is the most complex or the, has the biggest range of flavors of any spirit, along with uh, the way that. With complex drinks, you have to tease out the flavors. You know, you have to, like. I mean, this is what we all do. We we explore. It's absolutely. We explore absolutely. whiskey. You know, and we've got a Glen Cairn glass because the over the years people have figured out that's a really good shape to capture the aromas. It's because we want to explore the flavor. Doing this is, is another way of exploring those flavors because it it brings out aspects of the whiskey that, like, if we had the if we had a drama the. The bottle that I just cracked beside this, it would it would taste different, you know, because yes, it would just be the whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. But in this drink, you can taste them all. Yes. you know, you can see the the influence of the whiskey. So, putting your whiskey into a mixed drink, it's like it's like changing the focus on the lens, or 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 um, you know, changing your point of view, or you know, it's the, using using whiskey as an ingredient. Just lets you explore it further, and for me, like I'm obviously like you, Roy, obsessed with whiskey. You know, it's 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 my job. It's 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 more than just a job. I, you know, I, enjoy, I love it. Um, yeah. So, but what uh, what I like about whiskey is the range of flavors. So, if, if there's new ways of discovering a flavor in Scotch, then absolutely. For me, that's that's, and a, a Rob Roy is a great a great way of doing that. You know, it really is. And I think so, I think what what it's my th the thought in my head just now is to sit with the wee dram alongside it, maybe. Do you want me to run uh, it? And... No, no, no. I, would, I think that we'll, there's we're going to be far too much alcohol we'll be, to get we'll through. Yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll forget be... all the rest of the drink <laughs> we're going to make. We'll just be, oh, just drink it out the working. But even going one step further than that and maybe having the vermouth on the side as well, just to taste the vermouth and kind of in its deconstructed mm -hmm, states. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and then figure out not only the individual flavours, but what happens when it comes together. Because when I talked about a coffee note, now I've decided, no, it's actually like a really dark uh, fruit tea. Mm -hmm. It's gone all kind of fruit tea. So here I am, it's at a cocktail, which is a very, not contrived, but a very purposeful, a very deliberate thing. But you can play with it as well and think, oh, this tastes a wee bit. This reminds mm -hmm. me of, you can do the same thing that you do with malts potentially. However, one word of warning 
I am being very careful as I sip this. It's it's a strong drink. And it's very easy to drink. Greg's Whiskey Guide is saying I really just invented the Rod Roy. I invented it. No, it was <laughs> it was Rod invented the Rod Roy. Absolutely. The, now, <laughs> Ellen Hopper Stewart is saying uh, Roddy made the, the the Rob Roy with a hundred uh one hundred malt to fifty vermouth. So don't think so. it's did, a reverse did, Rob Roy. No, no, that's did I did I mess it up then? Did did you is this double strength? I did don't think did so. I make that double strength? Oh for goodness sake. Um it's meant to be a reverse. Well, maybe that's why it's tasting so bloody good. <laughs> Does that mean I need to make another one? No, this <laughs> this is this is entitled breaking whiskey. Breaking whiskey. Um, so if we've started to do that, we, we can go the, on. Stuart, if that's the case, thank you for pointing out. But I can tell you, however he made it, it's bloody lucky. Hey. Well, that's just saying the only thing I want mixed with Michael Karen is my mouth. Yeah. See, that's the thing, Mike, is that, and and I have to be honest, there are there's lighter things. Um, Kilkerran isn't the lightest, but it's a bit lighter than than this whiskey. I fear that that, that uh, Roddy's used tonight. Um, we're going to play a wee bit later with other whiskies <laughs> that might make you um, get a wee bit frustrated, Mike. So strap in because the idea here is that we do it and we tell you what the experience is. And if we recommend you, I recommend you give up some precious malt to try this. You need to do this. This is a lovely, lovely, delicious thing. You're still enjoying your malt whiskey. Nothing has been sacrificed here. You're just enjoying it, I think, is a different way. Am I convincing mm -hmm. anyone, do you think? <laughs> now, I know that we're all here because we enjoy our malts. We really do enjoy it, and it's never going to change. That's always going to be the pursuit. That's always going to be the, the groove that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. But I put it to you, and you've heard the theme over in months and months and months of V-pubs. If you expand your envelope, your flavor library, if you if you if you reach outside of your kind of groove, at the very least, you're going to be reassured that your groove's the right groove. Mm -hmm. But potentially you're going to build your flavor library, you're going to have a better understanding, your frame of reference is going to be much more relevant, I think. This is definitely doing that. When I took a cocktail, typically in the past, it would be a vodka cocktail. It would be my favorite. It would always be in a kind of dry vodka martini. Mm -hmm. That was the kind of thing I went for. And it was always me stepping outside of whiskey. This has taught me that I know whiskey can be delicious mm -hmm. as part of a bigger thing. And actively, as we've already mentioned, the whiskey can lift the thing. What would you say to... Mike Molasses there, who's talking about not only want to mix it with my mouth. That's it. What would you do? You think we could ever get him pouring his precious cocaine over ice, for example? Um, maybe if we poured some of our precious cocaine, so that he wasn't having to. Um, Let's do it. <laughs> my rocks glasses are they still upstairs? Uh, you pick out the orange and I'll go and get us two rocks glasses just for Mike Molasses. That's a great idea. I did forget them. I have no idea what's happening now. Um, I don't know how to work any of this stuff in these. Uh, <laughs> see, this is what happens when lockdown finishes and um, I genuinely have... I'm just going to drink. Cheers. And yes, you're right. I did make a, a non-reverse. This is good. The reverse would be even better. Sorry. <laughs> so I've, it's, Whiskey Novice says I've not to touch the red button, Roy. <laughs> right, what's it going to be, Roddy? The 16? The 12? Hey, let's do the do the twelve. Let's do the twelve. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. No, this. Well, I've got some twelve here. No, Are we? There's not enough twelve. All right. Well, let's do the sixteen. Well, there's some twelve, but it's not open. The sixteen. Well, yeah, the sixteen's fine. Are we? Did you want me to cut a wedge of? Well, how would you do this? How would you? I've got some ice here. Well, well, we just try it over ice. I'll just try it over ice. A wee pour. See, see what happens. Here we've got, we're, we're celebrating tonight. This, These are the two warrior glasses from the Scottish Test Dummies. And you <laughs> might you might know why I'm using these glasses because oh, this, this, my ice is stuck together. My friend and peer on YouTube, Scott of the Scottish Test Dummies. So the, 
so sugar kitty saying, can you make a cocktail with something 40 years old? Um, so I can I, live vicariously through the channel. <laughs> yes, sugar um, kitty, we, I could, we, but maybe... We, <laughs> we, 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 I have made uh, cocktails with extremely old whiskies before. Uh, didn't bring any tonight, sadly, but we'll, oh. we'll do that in future. We'll do that in future. Yeah, I don't mind giving up a wee pour of my cocaine. Do you want to put, pop some ice in oh, yes. your glass here of my cocaine here? But maybe not. But why would somebody do this with a precious malt whiskey, Roddy? What's the justification for this? Because it, it, it brings out different flavours than you would get from drinking it from a Glencairn. Or, um... Right, okay, I'm sold right at the start. I'm only pouring a wee drop of that. Is that too miserly? You mean a bit too precious? Hey, much Should we have a bit more than that? That's going to get in the way. Well, mines are stuck together. I can't separate mine. Oh, apparently I can. There we go. Now this is the, this is the twenty twenty one Kilkerran sixteen. Mm. So this is it's got that grassy thing that Kilkerran does. It's still, yes, it's still got that. I still got the Campbelltown thing as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe and, less smoke. Well, I, that's interesting that you say that because I picked up smoke and I chase smoke in Kilkerran. I don't pick it up. So you're finding it easier to see the smoke and I'm uh, and I'm saying... Right, and it's in a big wide open glass. But it's just it's just tonight. It's the way I am tonight. I'm sticking my face in, a, in, in this for the first time tonight. On the back of... It, the, the one I was sipping earlier is the, uh, the, uh, the Orchard House from Compass Box. And we've just had this very sweet, very rich thing. There is a wee puff of smoke here. I feel like there is a wee puff of smoke. I can't get that. It's, to me, that's I'm seeing the, the grassy thing that I always find in Kilkerran. You know, that that's that's kind of how I would pick out Kilkerran versus Springbank, you know, that it's grassier. But I'm not seeing the smoke. You're not getting it. No. I just think my I, I chase smoke everywhere. If I'm getting it tonight, it's there's another thing about this as well that I love, and it's the reason that I love pouring whiskey and, yes, malt whiskey over ice. We are not going to be able to analyse this whiskey. We're not going to be able to. If you pick a bit, a bit of grass and I get a puff of smoke, fine. But this is not the way to analyse whiskey because the colder the liquid is, the less it's going to give up. We get mm -hmm, that. We understand mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But this is such a texture experience now, right? When we talk about, when I said to you up there about the, the reason I love sipping it on ice is that if you pour it slowly, I tried to pour it slowly there, the water and the malt stays separate for a wee while, and sip by sip, you get this bizarre kind of switching of textures as you sip it. And the whiskey is going to go from being quite viscous and gloopy the first couple of sips. As you go down, it's going to get thinner and, and thinner as, with more uh, water in the mm -hmm. mix as the, as the ice cube melts. So the text is a texture experience as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the way you would analyse whiskey. Well, now it's now it's doing a. A kind of a sweet thing. Um, but sweet. But also, like, sweet the way that milk is sweet. Like mal like malty sweet. No, 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 no. no. It's not. It is sweet. See, to me, that that's... I would say that's... The, the, the ice has killed that a wee bit for me. Um, um oh, well, just pour more whiskey in. <laughs> <laughs> Take the ice out. <laughs> the, uh, so, what do you think then? Instead of a light thing like this, or maybe this is a wee bit a shade too light, would you go bolder, or well, would you just go for put, just if you're going to do this? I think consider a blender uh, for for whisk, whiskey on the rocks. I like a a sweet rum. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and something that's bourbon barrel matured. You know, so like a knock would be a good shout. Or, or well, um, here is the one that we had picked out previously. Now Roddy <laughs> doesn't know that I went and got this when he was talking about this. This is actually the whiskey that he proffered when he was talking about a, a whiskey that he loves over ice. Nice. Now, Mike, we responded to Mike in the chat there, and it ended up being Coquerin, similar age, by the way. Aye. Um, but uh, we're we're this is a mix-up of casks in here. This is a, a, a marriage of casks, various different casks. This is exclusively ex-bourbon and unfortunately no longer available. <laughs> much, to the, much to the frustration of us, of yes, both of us. Yes. We're both huge fans of um, whiskey. 
uh, and we only discovered that we both liked this very, very recently. Yeah. Um, but this, uh, I remember the, the Whiskey Rev and I, we would only pour this uh, for us and folk that we felt that would really, really, because it's very subtle. Aye, As aye. a whiskey, if you're giving whiskies out to people that are new and they're just coming into the journey and things like that, that you know, if they want to try this, absolutely. But they're maybe not going to get a, a hook or anything big and uh, understandable mm, about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was a subtlety in this. So it's interesting to me that it was the one that you would suggest to pour over ice. It's because of the I, when that was available, the I did buy that. This was forty five pounds. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. or yeah. when I worked in Oddbins, it was occasionally even on deal. Would you believe? Well, <laughs> I know. Um, Break your hearts, right? I know. I know. Uh, I would drink that in the in the winter, just neat out of a thin cairn. But in the summer, I would put it over ice. Um, I've never had it over ice. We were going to. We might still have it over an ice tonight. Depends on how, how <laughs> things pan out. We've, we've got to get we've got a few things. You've, to, you've got quite a lot. We've got a lot to be doing. I smoky <laughs> Boulevardier Jaeger knock made with smokehead Campari and sweet vermouth. Says Helen, marvelous slancha. Or should that be chin chin? Well, I tonight it can be chin chin. Yeah. Helen, absolutely. Multi mission saying this screams Jaeger knock. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, man. Well, I tell you what, if, if it was something that Roddy brought and turned up, he said, Oh, you need to try a Jaeger knock, then I'd be up for it. But I'm not going to be bullied. Um, I, wait, I took the bait from, from Molasses, Mike. The, uh, I'm not going to recreate that tonight because uh, it was a bit of a messy night. But there was one night that uh, in a whiskey tasting, we ended up doing murky bombs. So little shot glasses of Arden Murky and into, into lager. Oh, wow. That, uh, and, and to improve the lager? <laughs> the, no, a murky bomb is a thing of, of glorious beauty because the the Arden uh, that like, you know, the the standard Arden Murkin, the 46% batch right, one. Even the standard Arden Murkin has only recently become available to most mortals, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so people are literally, especially as the supply chain hasn't quite rippled to them yet, they're going to go to the with it. So, so. You, you, you get a little shot glass of, of Arden Murkin and you have yeah. a, a, like maybe that kind of size glass of, of, of lager. Of lager. Um, and you, you need to only half fill it because it foams up. Of course, yeah. So you drop that in and it, it makes like you know laggers wheaty. Yes, uh -huh. you know, uh, and the the, the Arden Murkin just it, it's just like all the grains. You know, it's sweet and barley, and it's just like it's a lovely grainy experience. You know. So here we go. We already know that breaking whiskey episode two is got to happen, <laughs> and we're going to be dropping little shot glasses, murky bombs, M murky, murky bombs, bombs. Murky, murky bombs. bombs. Yeah. My goodness, Arne Markin's either going to love this or absolutely hate this. <laughs> John Bell is saying, I really hope you have some behind the scenes uh, finishing these drinks. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to end up with a lot of glasses sitting here. Aren't they? Let's, let's put it this way. Uh, um, uh, Robbie, uh, Roddy doesn't have uh, his car outside. <laughs> so we're in, we're in good shape. And Tommy Elmer is saying that Anok was one of my first bottles to chase after Ralph, Ralphie gave it 91 or 92. Wow, so it was a favourite of Ralphie's as well. It was, a, it was just a beautiful whiskey. Mm. Uh, shots of Jennifer and Lager are a thing here, by the way, says he's in uh, Menos in Belgium. Mm -hmm. uh, we call them submarines. Uh, I've just had a super chat come in and I wanted to shout out uh, Greg's super chat, but I've probably missed it. I did put it up on screen there, uh, Greg, if I, so if it has dropped off, yeah, I'll read this way, glass to say thank you very, very much. As one comes in from Jimmy to say, I really didn't understand what was going to happen here tonight. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably a nightmare that Jimmy wouldn't mind being part of. Jimmy though. needs to get here and taste some of these drinks because you honestly, I will change your mind. I will. Uh huh. I, if Jimmy, if that happens, Jimmy, it wouldn't be a nightmare, but it would certainly be messy, my friend. <laughs> It'd be no. good fun. Is there a big pot of black coffee on the go? What well, there can easily be coffee. Yes, we do have to. Well, I haven't. I've only had a sip of this. I had a wee bit of a beer earlier. Well, you you had a, a hot drink. <laughs> um, I had this much. It's not finished yet, and um, I, I, it's different for me. I'm enjoying I'm, this. I, I'm I'm not enjoying that. Mm. You know, it's 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 kind of gone a bit astringent. You know the 
the I'm a fan of cocaine, but I don't like it over ice. It's we ha we haven't we haven't found the perfect way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't regret having given up a wee oh, corner of this to, to that. Try it. That's right. To try it. Taking one for the team, Mike Molasses. Yeah. Everyone is saying I haven't found I haven't found an example, but it seems logical that it should be a nice smoky cocktail that could introduce someone to peaty whiskies. Well, a smoky cokey we we kicked around, didn't we? Yeah, that that's a great drink, a smoky cokey. Um, it's uh, explain a smoky cokey. So that's a. Uh, Ervin Tchaikovsky, uh, who these days, um, so he works for Diageo. He's, he's a he was a bartender, and then he was uh, doing various Diageo repping jobs. But he had a brilliant series of drinks he was taking around festivals here in Scotland a few years ago. Uh, one of which was just Lagavulin Lagavulin. and Coke. Yep, Lagavulin sixteen and Coke, and it works. You know, it, it's a sweet drink, obviously. Um, but the, the Lagavulin's boisterous enough to, to punch through the, the cola. And I think um, that that is what we tend to hear. I heard about you experimenting with Long Row Reds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, yeah. where you were, because of the boldness and because of the flavour, maybe the tannic elements and the red fruits and things that comes from Long Row Red, mm -hmm. you were curious. It was Rob Roy's you were using? Them, uh, was Long it? Row I've used in quite a lot of different drinks. Um, the... So do, do, do the whiskies, is it beneficial for them to be bold and punchy of flavour to, to do well, this? Well, that, that's really interesting, actually, because it, um, it kind of depends on the drink and the other ingredients. So uh, the official Glenelgan 12-year-old, like, is, is that in the Flora and Fauna series? Uh, yes, yes, it's a yeah. Flora and Fauna, yeah. yes. That's, that's well, well, it used to be, it's now part of the extended classic malts as a 12 year old Glen Elgin. Yeah. So the, the Diageo kind of fairly standard malt, you know, it's, and, and you taste it and it's fine, you know. Uh, but it's also, there's lots of other whiskies like it, like it, you know, that it's not drinking it, it individually. You mean yeah, it does, it as, own, a, yeah. as a single malt, doesn't really stand out from the crowd. I have it here. But if you make a Rob Roy with it, um, sweet lord, it is. And I've made this for for the uh, colleagues who will sweet back. lord, sweet lord, sweet lord, right? Like, okay, good, okay, good lord, you know, okay. like Jings, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, got you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> me. Aye, aye. Um, it just, Elgin. yeah, no, it really it pops. You, uh, this is this is ringing a bell. You told me this this before. Well, it, when when I made this in work. Everybody was like, oh, here we go. And then they tasted it and were like, you know, this is an amazing drink. You know, it was, and that that's this thing of like a, how would you characterize an Elgin 12? It's like, it's malty, it's fruity. Well, it's, I, I mean, there, there have been, it's been said out in the past, and I know you raised an, an eyebrow when I said this before, that Glen Elgin has often been suggested that it's Diageo's Macallan. And I don't know if that's because a lot of Glen Elgin is matured in sherry cask, or I don't know if it's anything to do with the new make spirit or the, the, the condition of the spirit itself. But when you talked about it being, being, being quite samey, Glen, Glen uh, Elgin has often been, um, it's suggested to me, I haven't tried a lot of Glen Elgins. I, I've got a couple of SNWS. I've got the one that you're talking about up there where it has body. It's got a weight to it mm -hmm. that is not uh, all weight, well, Maybe you would have to go to a higher strength or a higher ABV to get that. Um, but that's kind of what's been suggested. I wonder if that's what it is. Is it one? Of, it's not one of the worm tub ones, is it, Quinn Uh I can't remember. Neither I can I. Know. I feel like it could is be. It, is Glen Elgin worm tubs? <laughs> yes. can, can you tell us? <laughs> Somebody tell us. Oh, knowledgeable lounge. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I think I, I, I am happy with that. I'm happier with that than Roddy is. I don't consider it a little wasted coquerent. But I'll, I'll bow to his greater experience that there's going to be better things potentially at Rock 16 if you're going to pour something over ice. Mm -hmm. What about the folk who, and this is one of the things I need to dispel. I'm going to ask you to make, make your next drink. Uh -huh. But before we do that, one of the things that I need to dispel. We had the Oswas recently and there were some wonderfully colourful comments and feedback and things that we got from that. And I suppose that a lot of them, people thought that, yes, it is Worm Tub Whiskey, says Lucas. Thank you very much, Lucas. Thank you. I used to have a wee a cheat sheet of all the Worm Tub distilleries that you sat on my desk when I did V-Pubs so I could remember them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Thanks, Lucas. It's an ass hat question, isn't it? Yes. L list the worm tub distillery. List the worm tub distillery. Which, which of these is not a worm tub That's, distillery? No, that would just be a good, interesting question. That wouldn't be an would that not be an ass hat? No, question? an ass hat is where you ask a question and even the people, because they're super knowledgeable, they go, oh, I know the answer to this. But the options that come up are not the answer. Ah. You've got to know the answer to something else and match the two to make to get the answer to the ass hat question. Right. So that would just that's be a, the, that's a real ass hat. That's okay. not they, there will be a quiz at the end tonight, and I've not done that with the ass hat tonight. It's just a tricky one. But a real ass hat is like that double layered right. Right. kind of twist where people get excited and go, oh, oh, like that, you right. know. Right. Okay. You know what? What Glen Cadam? What year was it formed? Oh, 1825. Your beauty. I'm in. <laughs> Was it the same year that George S. Grandris, <laughs> right? So that that's that's the ass hat thing. It's the right, kind of like to right, suck right, the wind out of right. it. Now I've lost my train of thought, but I was just about to make an interesting point. Oh, yes, crap. water. Right. So some of the comments that came in was, I cannot understand this discussion about adding water to malt whiskey. Malt whiskey is bottled at a very specific ABV so that we drink it at that ABV the way the distiller intended. Adding water is an abomination, and it should never be done. It's bottled. There's so I don't know how this misinformation gets out. We, we certainly I don't I don't I feel like in Scotland we are not we we are not breathing this mis misinformation. Right. But it's at some point people are saying maybe it's the old adage about a Scotsman only likes the only a. a Likes his uh, whiskey the same as his women, and <laughs> and and all of these stupid old tropes that just I don't know where or ever where I, they came out. Yeah, no idea. No yeah, idea. and yet you get people out there that are drinking their whiskey, forcing it. Some of these whiskeys that I've got are sixty nine percent ABV, and they're they're drinking it like this because aye. they think that that's the way it's intended to be to be to be drunk. Aye, aye. I mean, what would you say to somebody who was struggling to add water to whiskey? I've I've done it many many times, but I'd be interested in, in the Roddy take before you go off to make your next surprise. Um, so I would say that uh, I just on a practical level. Um, so before I properly like in a past life before I was a drinks geek, I was for for a long time I was a Laphroaig snob. Um, I would only really drink Laphroaig. Yes. So, and I drank enough of it to learn that if I was having a, a nightcap of Laphroaig and I was really tired, then I didn't enjoy it as much. And then I discovered that if I added a bit of water to it, then I enjoyed it again. So it was just like the strength of, of 10 year old Laphroaig when I was super tired that made it bitter. But a wee bit of water to bring it down, then I could enjoy it again, you know, as a nightcap. Yeah. Like, you know, like normally if you're having a you know, so just, just to frame this, how far are we going back? Are we going back 10 years, 20 years? 20 years. 20 years, years ago. Yeah, before I really was into whiskey. Like, yeah. I mean, in fact, more than 20 years because I've been I've been selling booze for 20 years now. Yeah, um, yeah. So 30 years ago. Um, <laughs> you don't like admit oh, it. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I discovered that, that from a purely practical point of view, adding a wee bit of water meant that um, I, could in, I could enjoy it again. And then uh, just learning about the subject and reading around it, I learned one of the interesting things is that for many distilleries and blenders and bottlers, they nose and taste all they nose all their whiskies at twenty three percent alcohol. You know, they don't nose them at full strength. Yep, absolutely. I've, I've seen I've seen it. I've seen it in real yeah. time. And 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 that's when you see when you see these comments. These these comments coming in. You you have to say to people look. The people who are making the whiskey that you're talking about are not putting it together at the strength that you're mm -hmm. buying it at. Nothing close to that. Sorry, Roddy. And the, the and the the other thing is that if you just just as a practical experiment, if you give up fifty mils of a standard whiskey and you or let's say a hundred mils and you split it into three glasses and you you add water to one and you add a double measure of water to the, the third glass and you nose them and taste them, you'll see different things. If you do that experiment of having the same whiskey in three glasses, two of them diluted, you will discover different flavours. And, you know, that's what we're here for, flavour. So I remember years ago, Ralphie did a video of Linkwood, Standard Floor and Fauna Linkwood. Mm -hmm. 
and he started to do his Ralphie where he adds the teaspoon, the teaspoon yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then it's, he's adding another teaspoon and, add, and he gets to the point that it's as clear as this that's in the glass here it's drained, it's completely drained but he's still picking flavour out of it mm -hmm. I have done that since, not on every bottle I own but regularly I'll do it I'll, once I've put too much water and I'll just can, I've drowned it anyway <laughs> just keep adding water and see if it gives up anything, a mm -hmm. common thing for me is that when it's very dilute no, no, really, is anise or, or oh, a licorice I, note. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's almost yeah. like one of those strongest notes that hangs on to the bitter, bitter end. And it doesn't add, it doesn't matter how much water you add, you've yeah. got you, that, and that, um, I don't know if it's fennel or, or licorice or anise, or, but you know the family of flavours yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about uh -huh, uh -huh. seems to be there. It's not, I don't think I'm getting it tonight, but, no, I'm not seeing but it's certainly something that hangs on to the end. Did, did, did you say about, about no, you, you were, no, I'm I'm smelling tea now. No, the tea I was. Yeah, I know, this, I know. Yeah, yeah, fruit yeah, tea, black tea, dark fruit tea. Ralph is a big advocate of water to pull out the flavors. Absolutely, but we know we we know that this is the case through experience, and I think what's nice is that we're talking about sacrificing drams and things. And what you realize is that you haven't actually sacrificed any whiskey at all. And in fact, the whiskey has given itself to let you understand mm. it a wee bit more. This is this, is, this has it. got fruitier now. I'm enjoying this more now that it's more dilute. That it's super dilute? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a lot fruitier. I mean, I'm still not I think I'd still rather have This is just, now this just, is now at high ball strength, right? This is this is yeah. this is very I would still rather watered. have a drama the, the in a Glen Cairn, but it's in it's better than it was when we poured it. Yeah. And a, for me. and a wee word of warning, and I think we have to, we, we will be trying our very, very best to drink responsibly this <laughs> evening, of course. I think what we've been doing with these whiskies so far in terms of pouring it over ice and, and making this delicious drink is making it very, very easy to consume it. Right. So there has to be a wee kind of, not that I'm trying to be responsible or, or you guys know what you're doing out there, but it is something to bear in mind. And I was wary of it earlier and remembered I didn't really have a hell of a lot to eat today. So I was eating in Roddy's face as we were getting ready tonight because I realised I needed a bit of a lining. What were you pointing out there? Um, Michael Henry yeah. knows at 25% strength for work. So Michael Henry is the... Michael, one of your whiskies are going to appear a wee bit later tonight. Or, I don't know if I should say that. I believe <laughs> that you're responsible for one of the whiskies that might appear tonight. Uh, Michael Henry knows at 25% strength for work. Always had water when drinking for fun, drop by drop until it hit the sweet spot for that whiskey. Yeah. Um, and then that that's an interesting point that Thomas Elmer is making about leaving the glass out overnight. The empty mm -hmm. glass can reveal can reveal things about the whiskey that you didn't see when you were drumming. I call it the lazy git. The lazy git. And I, and I think it's um, always amazing that you can recognise some of the things that you enjoyed from the night before. But it gives up. Is that what you just said there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives you, up new things. That yeah. You're like, oh my, mm -hmm. that, yeah. I never got that. And there was one that happened recently. It was. Uh, this is this is this is going to seem like a setup, but it's not. It was a Loch Lomond, and I smelled chewits in the glass in the morning. Chewits. So that's a very regional yes, uh, thing. Is, isn't it? Um, but specifically, it's. What would you? It's it's a it's basically a, sh a sugar chew, like, um, heavy yeah, sugar. It's, it's a very fruity, sweetie. It's, but specifically, the strawberry, uh, chew it fruit thing mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. in the glass the next morning. It was my Chardonnay yeast uh, Loch Lomond. Uh, um, there was there's been a couple of questions or a couple of people sorry have asked about what you're is, pretty good at this. You should do that. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 vermouth to use for a Rob Roy? Um, and it it kind of depends on the whiskey. Um, the two that I use the most are Dolan, uh, which is a French vermouth, uh, and it's quite light, um, and that works well with light whiskies. And then the one that I used when I messed up the proportions on this drink mm. tonight. Um, I don't think you messed up at is, all. Is uh, is Cocky de Torino, which is the one that that's kind of the bartender's favourite. Um, Cocky is, you know, ninety nine times out of a hundred, cocky is going to going to work. Uh, so do you know what I'm tasting now? Caramelized sugar. So what's that dessert that you turn upside down? A uh, creme creme brulee. No, not the creme brulee. Creme brulee. caramel. Creme caramel, which is the blancmange yeah, thing, yeah. and you pour over the syrup, and the syrup yeah, spills yeah, yeah. over the top of it. That's the, it's that caramel, that burnt sugar syrup thing. That's and that's that's probably coming from the vermouth because they do. 
most vermouths do have a wee vanilla component. Some have quite a lot. And then they do they do add, uh, sorry, whiskey fans, they do add caramel, so what we would call E150. To the vermouth? Yeah, to, to give it that dark colour. If we're going to add E150 to caramel, let us do it <laughs> like this. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Prestige, like we said, I have an Oz whiskey, 62.7% ABV. It is extremely intense, but also very drinkable. The way it opens up with water is amazing. That's the treat, I think, to higher ABVs. The extra ceiling of flexibility you have, the extra room yeah, yeah. to play with it at different ABVs, and then you get, the, even if you take a cast strength version of something that you could have bought at 40% off, if you bring it down to 40% and decide that that's your, your sweet spot, look at the fun that you've had. Uh, by the way, the VPUB next week is all about cask strength whiskies. It's a total cask strength themed VPUB, and that'll be absolutely, Andrew, one of the very things that we're talking about. Why don't you go and get yourself saddled up for our next uh, treat, whatever that may be? Right. And I'm just um, going to steal the How much prep time do you need before I bring you in? Uh, give me a couple of minutes. Two minutes. That's, I'll hang out with the chat and you'll hear me chiming you in. Hopefully, that, that, lap, that laptop up there is still live. Oh, no, I want to try the cherry too. Cheers, cheers, buddy. That was a terrific starter. By the way, follow this up. Tasty. Um, right. I'll, I'll take the glass away. Try and keep the mess down because it's. Oh, wow. The cherry's nice, isn't it? It's almond. Why, mm. why is there almonds in the cherry? Well, the cherry stone. Like the stone fruits. But, right. but it tastes like marzipan. Like, literally, the cherry tastes like marzipan. Yes, Maris, you know, cherries, sour cherries, like, so the stone fruit, so the, uh, the you know, uh, apricots, yeah, peaches, yeah. cherries, they've, they've all got the potential to have that flavour to them, like, you don't, all right, I don't know why now. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is the um, B-pub. We don't care about how long it goes. We don't care if there's distractions. Um, there will be chapter markers underneath at some point, maybe not this evening, but tomorrow. Um, so you will be, if you're catching this on the replay, you can skip ahead these wee off-piece distractions. But, but the, there is there is, there is a, a common component to stone fruits. So cherries, apricots, um, peaches, nectarines. Um, that would give it an almond. That like can this. give it a, that. And it comes from the kernel. You know, so there is no added ingredient in that those cherries that you brought tonight that gives it that marzipan because that's powerful. That's like yeah, that's the, that's what those maris. It's maris it's specifically maraschino cherries, um, which I think I think they come from like Croatia, uh, oh, wow. the Balkans, and Italy. Um, I don't know. Well, I don't know if Sniper King um, Kresmir is in tonight, but uh, he's he's from Croatia. He might have been it to, to add some. That that's signet that's striking. That the yeah. that hit of, of by the way, I love marzipan and I love almonds mm -hmm. and I love that flavour. So to have that at the end. Yeah, that I mean it, 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 it adds depth to any drink, you know. Mm. Well anyway. Let's see what you can what, what you can that, Yes, that that's it. It's the it's the cyanide thing in the stone. Hydrocyanic acid, says Max Kreitner. Yeah. And the stone that gives the almond flavour. Wow. Yep. Every day's a school day, Max. And that, that, that's why uh, there's some products that are based on them are banned from being imported into the United States because they've got some negligible amount of cyanide in them. Like, I don't yeah, know if it's I've marked. just noticed that somebody's in tonight. See the coasters that we're using? That's for a very specific reason. Can we hold this up here? <laughs> this is a Jim Whiskey Novice. It's not because it sees our face. It's not going to focus on Jim. Come on, focus on Jim. There we go. That's the novice. He's in tonight and he's talking about cherry bakewells, but I don't want to talk to Jim about cherry bakewells tonight. I want to raise a wee toast. Uh, Jim just celebrated a very significant birthday. I'm not going to say how old he is, but <laughs> happy 50th, James. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it was uh, yes, yesterday or the day before or something like that. Um, buddy, I have something very special to share with you when we do share a glass together. But in the meantime, let Roddy and I raise a wee glass just to say, Jim, Whiskey Novice, you star. I'm a, it's a privilege to call you a pal, and it's a privilege to be able to raise a wee glass and say happy 50th birthday, my friend. Cheers, Jim. Cheers, Jim. Cheers. Hmm. Right. Oh, no, this has gone dry and sour. and This is the grassy to me now. I've never had grassy in this before. This is the Compass Box Orchard House. Hmm. 
I think that's the after effect. And bitter. The it's this is because I think it's the what we've been drinking here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's gone. This is this is a bitter finish, whereas this was sweet, sugary, and slightly smoky on the finish before. It's going to get complicated, right? Well, that's that's what that's right. what it's here to do. See you in a moment, my friend. I get to hang out with you guys for a moment while Roddy is getting busy. Let's give him a couple of minutes. Sweet Coaster says Whiskey Novice. I'm jealous, says Daniel Williams. Hey, I think Jim has these. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you get your hands on them. I don't know if Jim's got a wee shop or something. Um, can I remind everybody that we're doing a wee fundraiser tonight? And I do have a full bottle of this. You'll see it over my shoulder here. And just to the uh, to the right of it, from your perspective, there's another wee bottle that I'll share with you. We're going to use in a, a cocktail tonight. And I'm going to give, give away a bottle of each of those um, to people that donate to our wee fundraiser to, uh, tonight. And it's been going for the last couple of weeks. Uh, on Saturday of this week, I'm going to welcome six barflies into this very V pub. I've got a sugarly table that we're all going to sit around. Uh, we're going to have some welcome drinks, do a full, a fully fledged, um, a full YouTube type uh, collaboration experience, uh, Aquavitae Blind Challenge, and then they'll be able to pick any bottle they like from the the bar to have a wee dram of uh, whatever they want to try. And we'll just relax together and have a few pours after the blind challenge. That's happening on Saturday this week. And that was open to people who uh, were close enough to be able to make their way here and make their way home again on Saturday. I'm really looking forward to uh, welcoming everybody. It's going to be a smashing wee event. All they had to do was uh, to secure their place, was to book their place and then make a donation to uh, Luca Tevin's uh, Kidney Kids Scotland charity. Tonight is pinned at the top of the live chat. I'm going to try to drop in the link one more time and encourage anybody that wants to make a wee donation to go off and do that. And I am monitoring those donations. And I'll be able to go in and pick out a uh, random bar flies. So don't keep your donation anonymous. Type bar fly somewhere in your name <laughs> and I'll pick out uh, your name. There's another wee giveaway that we're going to have tonight as well. Who's coming to that party? Uh, well, the two fastest people on the buzzer, I did not reach out to them individually. I did not with Seve and Scott, the Glasgow Bottle Chasers. They were the first to respond. I'm in, I'm in. Then we had Tom Scaramuza and Andrew Pierce, who have both had to pull out because of clashes with other events, a family activity and a sporting event is happening for those guys. They still made their donation. So I'm going to uh, collect the, the drums that we shared that night and I'm going to ship it to them because they're just uh, fantastic guys. Um, and then, so I won't see Tom and I won't see um, Andrew on this occasion, but Fraser has stepped forward. Fraser Thistle, you know him as, Fraser Richardson. Um, and uh, so has uh, Eric Weber. I want to think, say I'm pronouncing your name well, Eric, and we've got also Whiskey with Molly Ben, and also Whiskey Geek Ben Clarkson, who's traveling traveling up from down south as well. So they're all joining me here in the VIP on Saturday, and it was just the people who answered uh, quickest uh, got a response, and then went on to a waiting list after that. Um, so I know that there are people that reached out that wanted to be involved in that, but if this is successful and it works well. Um, I'll do things like that in the future as well. It's an easy fundraiser for me to do, and it's a wonderful way to, for me to share my whiskey. Steve Atkiss is in saying, this is as mad as a bag of cats, and I love cats. Peter Lee is saying, good evening, buddy. I hope you're having a great night at the V-Pub party. Peter, I am, and I hope you are too, my friend. Daniel is saying, Scott and Savia are the Glasgow twins. <laughs> they bizarrely are, Daniel, in very bizarre ways. <laughs> the only people that come to meet them know. Dora Pass Whiskey is saying, hi, everybody. Um, at work, so we'll watch the replay later. Have fun, Tim. I hope you're not working too hard, my friend. Uh, I hope you're doing well over there on the west coast of the US. Kilted Moose Scott is in here saying, very much looking forward to Saturday night. Me too, Scotty. I can't wait. Graham Fraser is saying, I've, I've long been a Glen Elgin fanboy. Um, essence of Speyside. Wonderful, Graham. I wonder what you would have to say about the idea that it's uh, been mentioned as kind of a Speyside, uh, sorry, uh, Diageo's. Uh, McAllen. Sounds like a fun group. I'd love to crash that party. Every single one of us would love you to crash that party. Roddy, give me a thumbs up if uh, you're ready to treat us with your next creation. <laughs> oh, two thumbs up. Fantastic. I'll give the screen over to you, my friend. Carry on. All right, Roddy, thank you. Um, so the uh, next drink that we're um, mixing up is um, whiskey and tonic. Um, the uh, 
um, whiskey and soda. Uh, you know, it's that that's kind of a, a, a drink with a very long history. Um, but um, two or three years back, um, we were in the shop. We were stocking a, or we or we had a load of um, a cucumber tonic, uh, and you know, cucumbers. Um, Kind of in the same, it's it's a, a gourd plant, so it's sort of in the same family as melon, and you know melons a sort of interesting fruity flavour. So I was I was using this cucumber tonic with a bunch of whiskies to see if I could find um, an interesting combination, just because you know it's another way to explore the flavour. And if you're using a, a cucumber tonic which is fruity, then maybe that will bring out fruit aspects of the whisky that you haven't seen before. Um, and then one night after a tasting. Uh, my ex colleague Eastman, um, who some of you might know, um, we he and I decided that we would have a a wee smoky whiskey and tonic, and it was incredible. Um, there was kind of a it was really hard to describe. It was like a sort of a a wee spinning fizzy ball of of, of light sitting on on top of your tongue. Um, a, which was just a really interesting flavour. And the only other time I've ever experienced that in terms of flavour was with a, um, an Australian wheat wine, sweet wine called the Noble One um, many, many years ago. Um, so I was quite excited to, uh, to to experience that. It's like a sort of, you know, it's like, what do, you, what do they call it? Ball lightning or like a, a, a little a moon candy thing going on in your tongue. So, um, fortunately, uh, Roy has the the whiskey in question. So, um, what we're going to do tonight is um, long row eighteen and tonic. Um, the cat's gone off. Can you believe we're doing this? So, um, a measure of long row. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, a measure of long row. Oh. Rocks blast, and the the key with this is that you, you you don't need too much tonic. Tonic's quite a strong flavour. Um, so what we're using is Schweppes, very widely available. We did, we're the thing about using a standard tonic rather than a cucumber tonic is because Long Row is such a big, powerful whiskey that it can it doesn't need to be encouraged along with the cucumber thing. So this is one of these wee tinnies divvied up. Oh no! <laughs> um, so it's quite a short drink. Um, uh, there we go. Um, give that a wee stir just to mix it. And then garnish with a wedge of pink grapefruit. There we go. I hope you enjoy this, Roy. I know that I will. Um, I'm going through that door again. Back to you. I'll see you in a, I'll see you in a second, buddy. Okay. Cheers, Roy. <laughs> uh, the only reason that was difficult to watch is is because it's my long row 18. <laughs> He's pouring me up. <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> I, if I trust anybody in whiskey, I trust Roddy. So, <laughs> no, 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 no bother. <laughs> So, so the, the the significant pickup, the takeaway there. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Rob Halford misses made uh, a whiskey tonic over the weekend and almost vomited. <laughs> so I have high hopes. <laughs> <laughs> and Blair Stevenson turns out a twenty four year old Glenn Lossie and Doctor Pe Pepper is absolutely smashing. Okay, okay. That's, that's so let's uh, make a wee note there, Blair. Twenty four year old Glenn Lossie. I've been making notes all night tonight, and. Dr. Pepper, I have to say. Well, interestingly, Dr. Pepper, that wintergreen, I think the Americans call it, that flavour, we get mm -hmm. germline, right? We taste germline mm -hmm, from Dr. Mm -hmm, Pepper. Mm -hmm. That flavour you can pick out in whiskeys. It's a, 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 a flavour yeah. you pair, right? Cheers, Chin -chin. my good friend. We have here a whiskey and tonic. <laughs> Long row 18 and tonic. Oh, cheers. Oh, good grief. You taste the, the long row funk. Everything is just 
I put it to you that uh, even at the to the point. Okay, I know what it is. I feel confident that I could pick out that that was a Campbelltown whiskey. I think so. Yeah, the, I think I think um, Campbelltown works with tonic because it's such a such a bold flavour profile. Uh, J- Jimmy Leg is literally lying on the floor <laughs> writhing. <laughs> He's literally <laughs> just uh, going through conniptions right at this very moment. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to we have to be very mindful of of that is that we are having a jolly time here but we know that folk can get their hands on spring bank right now in the mm-hmm. world especially in mainland europe is re- really really difficult mainland europe continental europe um the states have still got backlog of supply and the, the many states have, have got spring bank so, but long row is unicorn status now mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. things like long row 18. so we know that there's no way that we're just throwing our whiskey around here. Roddy has inspired this entire session tonight, this entire VPUB, by a throwaway comment about this very drink. Mm-hmm. We were talking about highballs, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I was talking about how at summertime I kind of take a wee high. It's from whiskey, usually in the warmer weather. And I'm, and if I do have a whiskey, I'll have a highball. And, I, and, and so Roddy started to talk about, have you tried whiskey and tonic? And I'm like, well, I did, and I, I didn't. It didn't really go um, very well. And he's like, well, no, no, you need to try this. This he said, and and the dis- I think the discussion of this came up. So that, along with the Rob Roy Rod Roy discussion, is exactly why we're talking about mm-hmm. this. This is a unique drink, and this is not unique because of the pink grapefruit, because Roddy's made it in my kitchen, because the tonic. It's unique purely because of the base malt you've used, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> there's, and that's, you know, that you're, you're making the point about it being unique. And that I saw somebody in the chat was asking about what would you use if you kind of get a long roll? Um, and that's, that, that's difficult because long roll, you know, all the spring bank malts have such a strong character that it's kind of hard to sub them. I would, I would say something like Romich, I think would be. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I get would, it. The, the would be a, yeah. a, a, so a cast strength Benromac, and even the the one I've got up there is the sherry cast peat smoke Benromac. Yeah, that that, that, could, that work, could work. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. the perhaps a Talisker. Um, I I haven't tried that. Uh, the but, but that that would certainly be an interesting experiment to to try it with Talisker. Um, a what else could you do? The grapefruit is bleaching into it now. Or are you? Do you like that? Or well, this is an interesting discussion. So we all have, you know, some people can't eat sprouts, and some people can't. You know, that my nemesis in my entire life has been grapefruit. No, oh, that, 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 no, no, no. This is, a, this is an interesting story because one of the things that I found off-putting in some whiskies, I won't say what they are, because the worst thing I could do is suggest it, and people get it in the whiskies was this flavor but i didn't immediately recognize it as grapefruit and we were at frankfurt festival in germany into whiskey and i'm talking about this really off-putting flavor note in this very specific whiskey and it's the, one of the reasons i could tell the distillery character every time right and i said what it was and the guy i was with there mcfault said i don't think it's that i think it's closer to grapefruit mm-hmm. so i've got two things to thank him for there now I don't need to associate the flavour that I hated with the negative thing. I can now bring it towards grapefruit. Mm-hmm. I can understand why I wasn't enjoying grapefruit and start to process it and enjoy it more. I don't mind the flavour of grapefruit in this. Right. And the whiskey, the distillery I'm specifically talking about, regulars will know which distillery I'm talking about, I'm actually enjoying fully. Even the ones that are overtly grapefruity. Right. <laughs> so... <laughs> So thank you, Aaron McFault. But that's what's coming into this whiskey now. So the long row's taking a wee bit of a backseat. Not his knee. <laughs> <laughs> but the grapefruit is, is starting to come into it as well. What's sh- striking to me is this should be fizzy. What's happened to the fizz then? It's dissipated quite quickly, right? The first sip was, sip was fizzy. Um, is yours fizzy? Not really, no. Maybe maybe whiskey interacts differently with 
with with tonic than gin does. I don't know. Because I, when I do make a whiskey and tonic, I'm not paying attention to the fizzy side. It's the flavour that I'm interested in, you know? I, often I'm, I fight between texture and flavour. Right. So if I'm getting fizz, if I'm getting well, mouth coat and oiliness, if I'm getting a, in a thin palate, that's that can often distract me from finding flavours. Right. So, and I think I am, I've always been drawn to texture. So maybe that's why I was thinking about the fizz. I like fizzy. I like fizzy and, and malt whiskies. I like fizzy and, and cocktails. This I mean, is... There, there is still some fizz. I can, there's definitely a wee prickle when you... Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's an interesting shout. Uh, Swaggerbauer. Swaggerbauer, yep. Uh, Avon Jerig. Now that that's that's a really interesting shoot because Avon Jerig's quite a uh, very a, unique. <laughs> well, it's it, it, I would I mean I don't think I mean rude if I'm saying it's a bit of a stinky whiskey. You know, it, it's kind of a, it fights on your tongue. You know, and maybe I, I've never tried this, but maybe those two fighty things because tonics are a strong yes. bitter flavor. Maybe those two flavors would complement each other. I would I would be interested to try that. So I about another strong one, which tonic might work. That's an interesting one, and and I mean you should get, you can still buy uh, Avangaric. I know it's small out term and things, yeah, but yeah. You can, it's usually it's it's one of these distilleries that we've forgotten actually exists. Often time, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. I have to say I didn't fall in love with it. Um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting rather than good. I think would be, I, 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 be a reasonable kind of a. And Connor Smith is saying, interesting about Schweppes Tonic, I've found their quality has dropped and it loses fizz very quickly. I wonder if that's a thing. I wonder if it's how the thing is made. Ben Nevis works really well in cocktails. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about, was that live or was that before we were live? We were talking about Ben Nevis. Um, potentially, actually, is something that might work in place of a long row 18. I wonder. Could, yeah, it could be. If you if you get one of the expressions that's that's a bit peatier. Yes, slightly peated. Uh, ben or that, that, yeah. that has the funkiness. Absolutely, absolutely. The Hogsheads, that looks like a new name. Welcome. It's a very odd V-pub that I'm welcoming you into tonight, <laughs> but thoroughly enjoyable for me. Thoroughly enjoying the Avangaric PX cast strength. Oh, well, there you go. So, um, is that... Is that grapefruit snobbery that's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> Frank, Pete Head is saying, pink grapefruits are weak, are sweetness. Florida white are really fully flavoured. Grapefruit taste, unfortunately, hardly available anymore. Do you know what's amazing about our crowd here? Is that we think we're sitting here getting our geek on. Uh -huh. We can't even hold a candle to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, these girls, that have, they've, they're probably kind of looking at us through narrow eyes and a smirk and thinking, oh, bless. I like, I like, I like that there's, a, there's, there's grapefruit, grapefruit strawberry. Chat. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Slinger is saying, Roy, just try and Glen Cohen tonic. It won't be my last. There you go, Mark. Now, I'm going to I'm going to venture, is that that'll be the Glen Co. eight-year-old, which I think is 58%. Oh, the, the ferocious one. Yeah. Well, it's not only like ferocious, but it's got that. Um, the, you know, when you talk about funk, I've, mm -hmm, I've got mm -hmm. some down there. I think, Mark, you've, that's a very, yeah, that's, very good that's one. That's a good shout, yeah. A good one to, to hit. A blended malt from from uh, from Ben Nevis. Um, we don't know what the other, we see it, they tell us that it's a triple malt. We don't know what the other two are. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's absolutely perfect if you can't get your hands on a long row 18. Uh, but I think Glencoe 8 is just as tricky to, <laughs> to get your hands on nowadays. But, the, but, but it's a lot cheaper. It ought to be a bit easier to get hold of now that Nika can take so much of the spirit for their Japanese whiskey. Well, that's going to be interesting. I don't think that's going to change any dynamics there at all. They're just going to keep taking the whiskey. And they're just going to put it it's out. Going to be labeled, lab, labeled differently because it's selling, and they're like, and the people that are buying it don't really care. Oh, it's tasty. We don't care where mm -hmm. the whiskey comes from. So I think that um, Ben Nevis, the availability is an interesting one from Ben Nevis because you always get this the, the sense that the malts that's available to buy there is based on what they're willing to to allocate to give up. Mm -hmm. It's not a focus mm -hmm. for them. It's almost like an aside. But we're very grateful to have that aside. Everyone is saying I am a super taster. <laughs> One of the tests for being a super taster is grapefruit is too overwhelmingly powerful. Broccoli is another one. See, that's what I'm talking about. But I love broccoli. Broccoli is I love broccoli and I love Brussels sprouts and I love these bitter things that some people don't really enjoy. 
but grapefruit for me has always been a step too far. It's always been a challenge. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm getting better with it now to the point that I'm actually appreciating it when I find it in malts. Mm -hmm. But if I was to even the thought of taking that out and biting into it is right. is a is a is, would be quite challenging. I would mm -hmm. do it. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's it's not pleasant for you me to think about. To it. It. I wouldn't yeah. choose to do it. No. Mm -hmm. Whiskey, Thomas. Uh, Sorry, Roland is saying with Ben Nevis, it's about the orangey citrus, citrusy, zesty flavours. It really stands out with cola, for example. You do not even need the peat of McDonald's. Listen, we're preaching to the converted. These yeah, guys are mixing yeah, their Ben Nevis as we Coca Cola. I mean, that's essentially a smoky cokey, like is McDonald's traditional. A cola. different twist, yeah, an interesting yeah. different twist, twist on it. I love that whiskey. Yes. McDonald's traditional. Aye. And again, it's one of the ones that's there, it's there, and then it's, yeah. it's not there for the yeah. longest time. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy Elmer is saying, I think uh, I'll try some of that Kirkland 23-year-old single malt and tonic. Tom, you only give up one dram. If you decide it doesn't work, you never, you don't need to, to give up any more past mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, my friend. I think this is an enjoyable drink that you've given me. Mm -hmm. I think this is perhaps the most enjoyable whiskey and tonic I've ever had, which hasn't haven't been a lot, if I'm honest, despite the big wedge of grapefruit in it. But I might not. I would have that Rob Roy every single. I know it's a trickier to make. Let's take this grapefruit out. Let's throw away the grapefruit. Was that like an empty cocaine glass? Save any more going in. I mean, it's it's really good. It's good because it's interesting. It's good because the flavors haven't all kind of merged into one homogenized kind of. There's you can actively taste different things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's the mineralic tonic fizz thing, right? Mm -hmm. There's the funk of the 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 Campbelltown malt, the long roll. There's the bitter, challenging. I think I think you I can also see quite strongly the the fruity side of long row in this. Like the, the and that's why I love long row eighteen so much that, that it, it you know when you take your time over it, the it's got a really strong fruit character that young long row doesn't they have. You know, the older long row gets, the, the fruitier it gets. That's interesting. The That's interesting. It's we, it's it's like um you know, if you're lucky enough to have tasted old, like well-aged Bomores, you know, the older Bomore gets, the fruitier it gets. Uh -huh. you know? Is that, you know, what, well, people talk about the heady days of the 1960s Bomores and the amped up tropical fruit mm -hmm. and mango that they used to have. And But even, yeah. even modern Bomore, like, so I guess if you're talking Bomore in its 20s, stuff distilled in the 90s. You know, as it gets older and older, it gets a stronger, fruitier character. Listen, you know, I've got okay cards on the table. The thing I was talking about with the grapefruit tonight is a bit more. I've got the Vaults Number One Edition, the uh, sea salt or whatever they called mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's so full of tropical gorgeousness. But I think it's also because it's been only bourbon cask but more which is a rare thing right. nowadays there's not many like tempest and a few others out there mm -hmm. but that vaults edition roddy is stunning yeah you the, uh, the last time i was on that was one of the samples you sent out for us. was it yes oh that's where it's all gone mm -hmm. i thought i'd be <laughs> drinking it all <laughs> but it's it's difficult to reach past i've put it to the back of the the shelf because it's it's not going to be an easy one to replace. Mm -hmm. But it's that's what I wish all the Bomores were like. That complexity, that mm -hmm. that where this bitterness that's challenging to me weaves into a much more colourful, vibrant uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. Whereas the official Bomores, I, I always find a wee bit lacking. Anyway, we're not going to tonight's uh, going to be fun and a, and a celebration. <laughs> and Daniel Williams is saying uh, you get mournful a bit more. <laughs> Akavita, you've never given. Uh, a bad advice, uh, Ian, on a whiskey, but Bristol Sprouts. <laughs> oh no, do you like Bristol Sprouts? Or don't I love like? Sprouts. Yeah. Uh, Bristol like Sprouts, them. cook, boil them a wee bit or steam them a wee bit until you like. Get them in a pan with some oil and salt and char them. Make the skins almost aye, burn. Aye, aye. Right, and then add sugar right at the very end and get get your char going on. And then throw in. Uh, you should have done the bacon 
for the bacon lardons or pancetta, whatever you <laughs> want to use, you do that first, toss those back in and mix it around. Ah, I just it's just heaven. It's heaven. But I understand why people don't like Brussels sprouts, Daniel. The you need to if you if you overcook them to start with, they get that real sulfury thing. Like so you over boiling. Yeah, yeah. So wow. you all veg can go. You, you, you blanch them and then you yep. and then you stir fry them. Or what I do is I blanch them and then stir fry them with ginger and garlic and mushrooms and that's and I think you've hit the nail on the head, whether you're steaming or boiling them first, blanching. Yeah, yeah. You think when you take them out, they're still raw. They feel like yeah, they're, they're still crunchy. raw, but you've just you've given them enough just to break things down a wee bit. And it, oh, just, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Cooking advice with Roy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I, have, I have no. If you think I don't know how to make cocktails, I have no idea how to cook food. But I'll tell you what I enjoy and what seems to work for family and things who otherwise could taste a bad Brussels sprout, a sulfurized Brussels sprout, an overcooked sprout. Here we go. It's all pouring in now. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whiskey Office Jim is saying I mixed Roddy's mixing. Would this be a good way to introduce someone to Pete? Ooh, I have a taste in this weekend. Need to perform a conversion. That is interesting because your only alternative, because there are these folk that's the, the only thing that's going to convert them to Pete is taking them to Isla, standing them there and making them understand what Pete is, and that always works. Mm -hmm. However, that might be an interesting thing, something like this. Um, where, where Pete can be a component rather than the 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 maitre d you know it can be yeah and i, I think you know that if you were um if you were using you know like a smoky cookie would be potentially a good way to try because it because it's the, the sweetness and and the cola is a strong flavor okay. um or and i'm trying not to uh, i'm trying to think of things that are <laughs> readily available so something like you know, Benroma, which has got that smoky character to it. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, Kalila, which is, you know, it's more light bodied. Um, what, what about trying a couple of malts? It, you know, the Kalila, but it's a bit light bodied and it does, maybe doesn't have the, the heft or the weight or the richness that you're looking about, you're looking for. So you could go for something that's unpeated and add would you is that is that a step too far because you talked about that you know if there was only one vermouth we've got 140 different oh, options yeah. available to us so if you add in uh, mixing your malts then it then it really it really it smash it smashes it splits the atom doesn't it it's difficult yeah i get i mean but you, you could if you didn't have a lot of choice on hand you could experiment with half pours of malts to see what you could make up or you know well, what about if you did something like black bottle you know which is a bit smoky or is it, uh, yeah, does, it yeah. have, does it have to be malts? Sorry, I'm talking to the screen. So yes, that's right. I know. Mm -hmm. You don't get... Uh, Aquavitae, Roy, are you going to try to get, create an Antal Tenbrook? Tenbrook? I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name well. Uh, it looks like a new name. Welcome in, my friend. But no, I don't think so. I don't feel I'm confident enough yet. Uh, but, you know, the reason that you've got good at making things that you like is playing at home, right? <laughs> Are you laughing at here? <laughs> um, so the Pete Head is saying that as long as we're talking about vegetables, we're not going to do any more cocktails. <laughs> Don't bring them back to cocktails, please. Is Jimmy still in? I, I feel like we've lost Jimmy. I feel like he's just, he's kicked his laptop into the sky <laughs> and he's just walked out the room when you picked, I think it probably happened right about the time that you picked up that long row 18. The long row 18. I, I think we might have lost Jimmy tonight. <laughs> Jimmy, if you're here, buddy, tell us. Earth calling Jimmy. Danny Hebbington is saying, I love Brussels sprouts, but I boil them so long I can suck them through the gaps in my teeth. Danny, no. no. <laughs> Rob Halford saying, swap that sugar for honey and chili flakes and you're on to a winner. Oh, okay. Aye, actually, aye, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Like the that. In fact, I think I've done it with maple syrup. Uh, Connor Smith is saying, Tap time stamps are going to be interesting for his Brussels sprout <laughs> recommendation. Yeah. I mean, it's very seasonal. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, try it first. <laughs> and, uh, Mike is saying, Jimmy, like, fainted. I'm really worried about him. I think I'll put a wee uh, quiet message in. So, what's next? I, I would, I'll give this um, good. The. But not as good as the Rob Roy. I I think you, you led with your best foot. I think. Well, I I think the the reason is is that that, that maybe we should have had the grapefruit discussion, right? Probably. Um, it'd be interesting. Could you do this with a big wedge of orange? Would it work I, uh, just I, as I, well? Yeah. I mean the. You, 
just ditch the garnish altogether, you know, like the garnish is just because well, the, like it's presentation tonight. Yeah, and, and usually when you get a G and T, there's a garnish, isn't absolutely, there? You know? so, absolutely. But yeah, you could. You so could a whiskey and tonic. The, the garnish was tonight. So, and I think that long roll, eighteen or any long roll, Highland Park, would be another one to play with. You know that's some that's a whiskey that I tend to neglect actually. Um, we all do, I think. I think we all do. I think the official bottlings are are like there's all that Viking nonsense. You know? um, well, there's there's a what well, and this might not be Highland Park, of course. This could be Scapa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is, not Scapa. <laughs> this is the Hip Flask Hiking Club's uh, recent bottling. Um, twelve year old. Yeah, twelve Orkney. year old Orkney, Yeah. So I mean, it was this this bourbon cask, I think that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can get them with, with a bit more kind of. That would that that could maybe be an alternative. Anyway, I lost my train of thought there. Where we're talking about why did I go to Highland Park? Just other drinks. The, to oh, play the with. oranges. Yeah, yeah oranges. Out, I, so Highland Park has always had an oranginess for me. Um, Aaron has an or, a different kind of oranginess for me. So I think that if I tried this myself, and I will try it again, maybe even if. Um, I've already given up my long row 18. Yeah. We won't do any more yeah. of your long row 18. So if, we're, if I'm going to experiment and try with other things, maybe I would try a wee wedge of orange if I was going for the mm -hmm. presentation side of things. Fantastic. Aye. Right. What uh, Do we have another drink in, in the tank, do we? Um, yeah. Th th this one will take me a little longer to get the bits and pieces together. So. Well, I'll watch for you until you're stationary and not active and you're waiting for me. I'll keep a wee eye and then I'll, and I'll check and I'll ask you to give me the thumbs. Aye. So five minutes? Eight minutes? Uh, maybe five. Maybe five. Shouldn't okay. be more than that. I'm Perfect. Take, I'm taking the compass box with me. Take your companion compass <laughs> box with you. Absolutely. This is this is a treat. This is I didn't realise just how much I was going to feel like I was being indulged. It's magic. It's really, really good. The fact that uh, we can have some folk in enjoying it with us as well. It's a very different V pub tonight, and that's very, very deliberate. Um, I hope that you uh, are having an okay time with it. Uh, I noticed that uh, Rob Halford is saying, "Where is the Roddy Toddy?" Well, I have to say that it's already on the list. I've got a Jaeger knock from Menno. I've got a Roddy Toddy, uh, and and actually, I forget who. Um, who was talking about the 24-year-old Glenn Lossie with Dr. Pepper. I forget who that was. Um, so if uh, if you're still here, that would be a good one. And I think we could uh, do this again. It's very seasonal. In winter, this makes sense to me, a different way to enjoy. Listen, we are all going through an incredible whiskey journey. We're all enjoying buying whiskey, tasting whiskey, and sharing it. But let's be honest, we are all over accumulating. I am over accumulating. Not everyone, if you're if you're earlier in your journey, probably you're not there yet, but there's a very strong chance that you might. And if you get to the stage that you're over accumulating, you're there because of chasing flavor, different experiences, different, different things to unlock in the whiskey. It's wonderful. So it makes sense that you would give up one or two pours here and there to unlock flavors, to amplify other drinks, to bring new experiences. Why wouldn't you do that? You don't have to do it, and it might not appeal to you, and I understand. We're doing this tonight in the hope that you can maybe get an idea of things that you might want to try and explore. Um, and Island Robert Stewart is still on a vegetable theme. He's saying, how about Deanston with liquidized raw asparagus? I'll float that past Rob, Roddy, but I'm not sure it'll fly. Blair Stevenson is saying, tonight feels like I need to find a whiskey-vegetable combination that I like. That's a challenge, but bugger it, a challenge I accept. First up, Scapa 16 and Carrot. Gavison just poured an Oogie and Tonic. We'll see how it goes. Ooh, Ardbeg Oogadal. So, I mean, the, the, the smoke is up there. Well, interestingly, Longrow and Ardbeg are both, uh, the malt is peated at 55 ppm, so similar amount of peat. Ugadal is going to be much younger than the long road that we pour tonight, but I can see how that might work. Gav, let us know. Ed from the Rockgut Review was talking Dr. Pepper. I love Ed. I love Ed and Erica at the Rockgut Review. There is not a channel on YouTube doing whiskey like those guys. 
Uh, Sugar Kitty saying Ed from the Rock Review. Oh, sorry, pick, picked it up and the, the chat. I need to scroll back up. The Hogshead is saying Kalola. Kalila, sorry, cream liqueur is an interesting experience. Kalila cream liqueur. I have never even witnessed such a thing. Does that exist? Mark Slinger is saying, enjoying the, the Glen Keonic. <laughs> My goodness. Mark, okay. Yes, Glen Elgin and tonic. Of course, Mark, that's what you're pouring. Roland is saying, I sometimes use mixing with just a few drops of malt in a familiar beverage like Coke. Uh, what you get is a well-known drink with a small delta. This way you can extract the distillery profile. See, there's... There's an argument that a lot of the things that we are doing tonight seems like whimsy and fun and, and throwing caution to the wind. But then you see Roland chiming in with something like that and what we've been talking about tonight, that doing this, much in the same way, leaving your empty glass overnight, a silly thing can unlock these things that was not accessible to you the night before when you were drinking it. Doing things like this can potentially unlock other things in the whiskey that was previously hidden from you. Jimmy Jazz is here. A fun evening, Aquaviti. I might be more fearful of Brussels sprouts than scooters, though. <laughs> so Jimmy Jazz, I got to hang out with Jim Jensen. He flew all the way over the Atlantic to hang out with us in, in Bristol for an amazing, an amazing tasting on Friday night where we were tasting uh, Broras and Klein Leash and ancient Kalilas, rare malts and managers' drams and just... Hey, there's a there's a, an organization, a club uh, down in Bristol called the Dusties, um, and they get together and they amass, they collect these bottles and they turn out these tastings for zero profit. You know, just um, just to share the whiskey, to unlock these whiskies. It's becoming more and more difficult to do as time goes on, to to touch and connect with these really really ancient unicorns. That was an amazing experience. And then on a Saturday night, we stayed down one extra day to go to a um, a, a tasting hosted by the, the Whiskey Barista on Instagram, James uh, Bromage. He put together a fantastic lineup of closed distilleries. I felt privileged to be part of it the whole weekend. That uh, was a very, very good thing to do. What made it amazing was being able to do it with uh, folk that I haven't caught up with in a long time. Jimmy Jazz from the States, um, Shiv, uh, Jez, uh, uh, Satu, uh, Tom Lindsay, Kieran, just everybody was there. It was amazing. And all the people that I met for the first time as well. Sam, hi Sam, how are you doing? Uh, um, Leo, how are you doing, Leo? Just a terrific, terrific thing to do. Now that COVID is seeming to take a wee step back, I hope, we hope, we all hope, um, things are starting to feel like we can connect again and it's amazing. Hellswood is saying, sorry to shout, Roy, but you need to do this live with Roddy, with a barfly, barfly audience in the flesh. What a great night that would be. <laughs> you know, the wonderful thing, Helen is, Helen, is the heckling is very quiet when I'm sitting here. But you're right. That's a good idea, Helen Widdison. Falscraft is saying, whiskey smoothie pairing. Well, I don't like the concept of smoothies, but it might be interesting. Listen, if we make this into a wee series, this idea of kind of twisting it and taking it as far as we can, then... Um, you know, within reason, you know, with there has to be a reason behind it. I know that it seems foolish and folly. Jimmy Ag is saying, if any more Campbell things are going down tonight, please let me know now. <laughs> Jimmy, there is not a drop of your Campbelltown, your precious, precious Campbelltown whiskey, or my precious Campbelltown whiskey, going down any drains. Don't worry, my friend. I am very glad that you're still with us. Cheers, buddy. Whiskey Novice is saying, what about a meaty aquavite? A meaty aquaviti. Any hand bag with a slice of bacon in it. I'd try it. <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, <laughs> Peter is saying, Jimmy, like, see, he still remembers that meetup. Great whiskies and no cocktails whatsoever. Uh, there's still hope for aquaviti. As long as you guys are here and indulging this nonsense, there is hope for us all, I think. Roddy, are you good? Roddy looks like he's in good shape. Let's see what Roddy is creating for us this time. <laughs> um, right, okay, so what I've got here is um, a whiskey twist on a pina colada. Um, this recipe comes from my former colleague Eastman, uh, who I talked about earlier in the context of the Long Row 18. Um, 
who's uh, he's repping for various brands in Ohio these days, and uh, he's using the Glenmorran GX, which is one of a whole bunch of whiskies which have come on the scene recently that, that have been produced by the distillers and bottlers specifically for mixing. Um, so he came up with a, a, a Glenmorangie based variation on a pina colada. Um, I don't have the Glenmorangie X, so we um, made a trial run uh, before the, the VPOP tonight. To, to, to we, we had a, a couple of candidates in mind and we tried a drink. So what we're doing is we're using um, Glasshouse. Um, so this is um, Glasshouse, which is, I think it's what you would call a, a single blend. And it's a blended whiskey from Loch Lomond. And, you know, if you know Loch Lomond, they, they can do everything on one site. So they make the grain component and the malt component. So we've got um, 50. After my earlier mix up with the supposed reverse Rob Roy, which wasn't reverse. I've been more careful now. So we've got 100 mils of whiskey. This is a, this is enough to make two drinks. Um, one for me, one for Roy. Um, we should we should mention actually that the grain component there, Roddy, that is um, an interesting whiskey because the grain component, component isn't uh, typically wheat or maize. This is actually uh, malt, 100% malt through a coffee still as well. Yeah, it's, it's one of these really fascinating things about Loch Lomond that that, that really sets it apart from from other Scotch whisky distilleries, and you know it's one of the reasons why it's such yep. an interesting distillery. Um, so yeah, we've got the 100 mils of whisky, uh, 100 mils of pineapple juice. It should be freshly pressed, but um, there are limits to. Um, how much, like it's easy enough to press limes, but pressing pineapples, you try to press a pineapple. So there we go. So that's a hundred mils of pineapple. And there we go. Um, so then we've got 50 mils of coconut milk. Now it should be a product called Coco Lopez, which, um, it's very hard to get in the United Kingdom. Coco Lopez is a kind of coconut syrup. So I've cheated by using coconut milk and then 40 mils of um, sugar syrup. That's Demerara, which is why it's so dark. And then finally, um, 30 mils of lime juice, which is, that is freshly squeezed. So then we stick some ice into that. Doesn't want to come. Get the top on. Then we get the... Just top them up yourselves. Keep talking them up yourselves. This is the point that I feel like I should be speaking and interacting, but I am so enjoying seeing somebody else come to my house and making drinks for me. <laughs> I mean, you could mute me, Roy, and uh, talk. Is that, is that what we should do? Let, let me do that. I'll bring myself in as well. But, it, but it's fascinating because normally, if you were to go into a bar and you were to order the cocktail, you wouldn't necessarily always see it getting mixed, right? You often it just gets brought to the table, table once it's once it's already prepared. So I'm getting to act not, and I, it's here for posterity as well. I can just click back to the timestamps that I hope I have managed to put in, in the description box below for those of you watched on the replay. Thank you very much. So I'll be able to recreate this in that very spot at some point in the future. Now, tell me, if you count the stirs in your um, Rob Roy, do you count the shakes in your... Um, a, a shake till my arm starts to burn. <laughs> Until the lactic acid is an ingredient in the cocktail. <laughs> um, the uh, I've never worked, never been a bartender, fortunately, but um, 
the uh, the, the one drink that they all dread making is a Ramos gin fizz. Um, Everyone's expecting a, a flip over your back shoulder like in cocktail. Do your Tom Cruise. Okay, so here we go. Two whiskey coladas. Let's bring it down and we can yep. have a wee go at that. Whiskey coladas. Let's get the coasters at the ready. The 50th birthday man, Jim Ingram, whiskey novice. Remember tonight that uh, we are trying to do a wee fundraiser. There are giveaways tonight for anybody that makes a donation to the amazing uh, charity uh, Kids Kidney Scotland. There we go. Ooh, this looks better than your trial run. A lot better. I, I think I, I did shake it harder. Well, let's get um, the jaggy bit away. Yeah, mine, 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 mine. <laughs> My poor old knee. Um, chin chin. Little chin chin. Cheers. Should we go in? <clears throat> you made it sweeter. Oh, I did, yeah. Because the what you you said you liked it drier, but most people would expect a cocktail to be sweeter than the way I made. No, the, no, the no, trial. no! Don't listen to me. This is better. <laughs> Everything is better. Um, it's there's there's less whiskey in this. Maybe that's the only thing that's. We gave a wee drop of this to my wife as well. Just let me finish the thing about the the, the fundraiser and the giveaway. <laughs> I'm still tasting this. Um, okay, I'll get to this in a minute. So, uh, kids, kidney, uh, sorry, kidney kids, Scotland. Uh, Luca Tevin, eleven years old. He's had his transplant already, but um, and through his trials and through his uh, difficulties, he's had. They put together a fundraiser. Uh, two barflies, Gordon and Gus, uh, have participated in that. And the, I'll drop the link in one more time. It's pinned at the top of the live chat. Anybody that wants to make a wee donation, um, please mention the word barfly as you do that in your donation. I've got two giveaways here, and we've got one as well that we're going to give away right now. We've got a bottle of a Compass Box a Orchard House that I'll give away. As long as I can legally ship alcohol to you, you can have it, as well as a bottle of the glass house that Roddy has used for this. Now, I bought these myself with my own money. There's no sponsorship or anything on here. I bought these whiskies, and it's easy because none of these whiskies are expensive. The Compass Box is £42, thereabouts, and the Glasshouse whiskey is £30 or less. I mm -hmm. actually paid 20, £26 a bottle for those. Um, but they are delicious, and they're very, very good for the things that we're talking about mm -hmm. tonight. They're easy whiskies to enjoy and sip, but they're easy to enjoy as a, as a mixer too. And in fact, the glass house is specifically put together to make uh, the best highball. Because we did talk about making this whiskey colada with a 30-year-old whiskey. Which we would have been up for. Yes, we would But have. Jimmy Leg would have sent a missile. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we were going to, the bottles there, we were going to use, um, Roddy had brought over some of the, the Good Spirits Company. Now, this is, if you ever see a bottle of this, this is not a 10-year-old. No, the 10 is for the 10th anniversary. This is a 30-year-old grain. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's perfect for mixing. Uh, well, it's, but it's, I guarantee you that there's going to be a component that this will add that no other whiskey is going to be able to, mm. to add. 30-year-old grain whiskey is quite amazing. And I remember sipping this neat when we when we all bought this mm. for your, part of your birthday celebrations at the Good Spirits Company. It was a pure stunner. Yeah, it's a crack <laughs> A belter. Glenn, Glenn Anderson's bought a dram to say, Barfly, some more oil money for charity. Glenn, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. A rate, what are we calling this? It's a whiskey colada. A whiskey colada. Glenn Anderson, cheers to you, my friend. Cheers. Cheers, Glenn. So Luca Tevin has been through his transplant. He's doing very, very well. But through his trials, he realized that other families might need support to go through that same thing. Really emotional, really fantastic thing. Really benevolent. And Gus and Gordon have got together to do various things. And we are taking our place to try and raise some money for that as well. So if you are thinking of sending me these wee uh, virtual drums and things tonight, consider maybe sending them across to uh, Gus and Gordon's fundraiser as well. If I can legally send you that glass house or the... Compass Box Orchard House, I will do that. If not, I'll put together a wee care package for you so that I can send you something appreciative 
Um, and I'm, all you have to do is just mention the word barfly in your donation and I'll, and I'll have a wee look. But we're going to give away something now as well. Not this. <laughs> we're not <giving> away this. <laughs> but uh, Roddy opened up tonight with a uh, his reverse Rob Roy. And actually, would I be... Can I score that out and go, Rod, Roy, can I, I could do that, could I not? Sure, yeah. I'll, put, I'll score out the B and I'll put Rod, Roy. There we go. And we're going to give this away. We're going to wrap it up in some nice uh, Ardnamurkin tissue that it came in. But I, I wanted to open it up because this is, looks really very cool in the bronze wax here. How do you get it to focus? It just, as long as it doesn't see our faces, it should focus. There we go. This is a you can buy this at Good Spirits Company, I We're guess. Sold right out now, that's the last one. This is the last one, yeah. I mean, we might make another batch, but we'd need to get more Arden Merkin. I'll just keep this one then. <laughs> no, we're going to give it away. We're going to give it away right now, as long as I can legally ship this to you, you can pick this up in the live chat tonight. So, the first person to tell us the pre no, that's too local. It's too local. I need to, it needs to be more kind of out there. What can we ask people? Yeah, we didn't think this through, did we? No, but it's okay to do it. It's okay to do it on the hoof. Like, we need an ass hat question. No, no, an ass hat. One that anybody can get. Ardemurkin that's used in this. Is this Ardemurkin? Aye. Huh? This is Ardemurkin in this as well. That was, that, oh, does. That was the Ardemurkin AD 0515 CK181. Fantastic. Regan's Orange Bitters. So Ardemurkin won Best New Distillery in the Oz was that was that were two weeks ago. Wow, that was two weeks ago. And the People's Choice Wild Card, Ardemurkin did not. It was pipped by another new distillery. The first person in the chat to tell us the distillery and the People's Choice that took the plaudits has this. It has, please only answer if I can legally send this to you. There you go, Che Francis. Is that Che Francis comes up first? I think so, yeah, that's... Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. The trouble yeah, is, is that depending on where you are, sometimes maybe Chris Brown, who comes up second there it, it, on his screen, I, I'm in first, I'm in first. But on our screen, it's definitely Chief Francis. What I often do is take a screenshot, but I've got eyes here. Uh, absolutely, everybody's seen Rassi. Rassi did take the plot as, uh, for, as the people's choice. Uh, but Chief Francis, this is getting sent to you, my friend. So I'm going to scribble your name in this wee label too. I hope that's okay. Then I know who it's going to, and I'll put it over there. Do you see all those wee boxes and bottles that's littered over there? That's all my postage I've got to catch up with. And, Che, if, if you haven't been persuaded already by what we're doing tonight, hopefully the taste of this will... This is So this is um, not the drink that Rob, that, uh, Roy and I had tonight, because this is this is a slightly different Ar Ardnamurkin single cask that, that went into this one. It was the, the shop's 10th birthday Ardnamurkin uh, and that's my colleague Sarah who came up with the recipe for that one um, so it's it's, it's I, I it's as good as the one we had tonight I would say obviously I'm biased but it's slightly different I'll let you do your best wee tissue paper packaging there, <laughs> Che is a long term bar fly mm -hmm. and also now working up at Green Welly at Tinder Whiskey oh, nice. well done, congratulations to Che, well done buddy um, there was there was a question there, or a comment. Uh, this is starting to separate. That's normal, though, right? Uh, no, that's. I was going to. So the this drink is uh, when I when I was making it upstairs. I said that we should have had yes, a uh, Coco Lopez, but that's that's really a North American product. Super hard to get here, and I couldn't get any. So this this drink is. I don't know if you can see that. It's it's starting to separate slightly. Yes, um, yeah. it so actually it looks is, more it's more defined on the camera, doesn't yeah, it? It, it looks like the head on beer on the camera. Yeah, it, 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 so it's visually unappealing. Um, it still tastes as good, but the, if you can, if you're in the states, then this drink you would use the Coco Lopez because then it wouldn't do the separation thing. Um, and but there was sorry, some... David has just sent me, a, and he's saying bar flies. David, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for your virtual dram. What I'm trying to do is get the virtual drams going towards the fundraiser tonight. So it's the it's the link that's pinned at the top of the chat, or it's here. But buddy, I'm going to make a note of your name and I'm going to add you to the draw, um, so that you're included, my friend. Hey, I maybe wasn't clear enough. <laughs> Jimmy's still not happy. <laughs> that's the whiskey trying to get away from. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, he's he's something else. Is our Jimmy? So we we could give it a start though. 
and well, yeah. it's, but um, essentially, like in, unless you've got the right exactly the right ingredients, it's never going to be. Yeah, no, that that's that's cool. That's cool. But there was somebody further up the chat who was was saying that you should never serve a shaken drink over ice. Well. I would say that one of the things that we are doing tonight is is not going by the rules. One of one of the drinks that we didn't do tonight, um, but we may do in the future. But we may do in the future involves citrus, which is stirred rather than shaken. Um, and any bartender will tell you that if you've got citrus in the drink, you must shake it to integrate it. But the I've discovered a drink that involves citrus that is actually more interesting if it's not shaken. Um, so, you know, that's what it's about. You, you, and is it whiskey based? Yeah. Um, as long as it's as long as it's on a whiskey theme, that's yeah. the only thing that will stick. And if everything goes out the window yeah. on the nights like these, yeah, as long as we can stick to whiskey. So the, the the whole point of tonight is that you know the as long as it's um, something that you can taste, then do do whatever you want with it. You know, and if it doesn't taste good, then you just never make it again. You know. That's right, and 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 the idea that we do this so that Jimmy, you don't have to. I'm sure that, that no amount of convincing would have Jimmy Leg running away to mix his whiskies with uh, coconut and pineapple. However, I think you might lose out. Certainly, a bit of fun. Let me let when you come here, Jimmy. Let us do it for you right, because right. this this is a nice wee drink. Uh, and a, uh, there's somebody trying out the smoky whiskey and tonic. Glenn Anderson. Glenn Anderson. And he's saying, I, well, you mentioned he was talking to his earlier, he said, and he's now he's saying he's, I kind of like it. So there's a good chance here that we're starting to convert some folk to, it's not the dark side. No, I, no. I prefer to think of this as, there isn't a darker a light, it's just a different side. It's like a B side or a, no. a different take that it somehow could potentially enhance the A side, right? Mm -hmm. If your main groove is just analysing and enjoying, enjoying your malt whiskey, that's going to be mine forever. We've given up this V-Pub tonight to kind of take a wee step outside of our comfort zone a bit, only to discover that it's a very comfortable place to be. <laughs> a pina colada is a thing of great beauty, you know. I think I'm drinking a lot faster than I normally would. <laughs> in fact, the... there is absolutely no doubt that I'm. If I had some drams in front of me and measured glasses, I would be able to just glance and see how much I've, I've Aye. But tonight is it's and and it and it seems to be I seem to be ingesting it faster and it's, it's working faster. But it's it's very very enjoyable. It's very lovely. It's the duff side, the duff says side. Hell's Winter. Aye, aye. We look at the duff side. I would say I'd, I'll put this ahead of the long row and tonic. Okay. Definitely, mm -hmm. I think Lynn, she had it a wee bit earlier, but it was drier. This mm -hmm. being this this nudge or two sweeter, mm -hmm. she would drink this with me. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is how I get my wife to drink whiskey with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, that um, glass house, it is a light, sweet. It's um, very sweet and very light, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So it is a good one for people who are less keen on whiskey. That I, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I, I put it, I suggested that maybe, you know, it could be a, an alternative contender for if you were buying monkey shoulders or those type of things to to make cocktails with, or Ockentosh brought one out, the bartender's model or something, I think it was a bit pricey. Mm -hmm. But the Glasshouse one isn't that expensive, it's sub £30, 25 to £30. Pounds. Um, and I think it's a perfect whiskey for that. And maybe the extra oomph of the ABV gives you a bit of flexibility, actually, when you're making cocktails to mm -hmm. play that in and take it as part of the... This is second place for me, but I don't think anything can beat that. Che Francis is a... Uh, Rod Roy, I mean, Rod that, Roy. that was just that, that, and that's that's and the full stop of the cherry at the end. Of that, 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 that is that is absolutely down to Arden Merkin. You know, like I've like I've made hundreds, if not thousands, of Rob Roy's over the years, and that is easily in the, the top five, you know, possibly even top three. You know, the tonight or or, or with that whiskey, that with that whiskey, yes, which I've yes. made before, you know. Um, I, even, I mean, you, I know you said that there's a suggestion that maybe you, you mixed up the proportions tonight, but I, I'm going to say that it was it was perfect. Maybe be more loaded with whiskey made me even more drawn to it okay, right, potentially, right? right. right. Um, um, I mean, I did I did mess up the the, the I, I got it back to front, so it was a 
it was a Rob Roy, not a reverse, but in any case, it was it was still yeah, remarkably mm. delicious. Um, Jimmy Legacy like saying, I am having as much fun as I had at the dentist yesterday. I was hoping to forget about having fewer teeth, but this hasn't helped at all. <laughs> Ryan Sullivan is saying, hey, Rod and Roy in the piss. Well, no, Ryan, because um, if Glaswegians go on the piss, they don't do it messing around with pineapples and coconut milk. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, Ryan, I don't know where you are, buddy. I think you might be a wee bit local to us, but you know better. Rob Halford is saying, Roddy, is there another more common whiskey you'd recommend for the Rod Roy? Well, of course, that's fair. That's fair for people who can't get their hands on any kind of okay, so the, potentially. Um, uh, the Dougie Lang Big Pete okay. makes a really good Rob Roy, and that would be with the Dolan, uh, Dolan Rouge, which is the weed. That's the wee bottle yeah, from that I one, have. Yeah, that, yes. yeah. That, so they're, or indeed, you know, you could like, so a Big Pete Rob Roy needs a light vermouth, so Martini. Rosso, which you'll get in supermarkets, would work. Yes. Um, so what? What's another light or PT whiskey light? Rob, light big peat. Um, do, do you do you want to keep it? You know, a light and fresh peat, or do you want to keep it? A, a, you know, a heavy peat. Um, I feel like the Ardmorkin tonight was quite a rich. Thing. Yes, that that was that was a very full bodied one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, big peat makes a really good Rob Roy. Um, let's see now. A, um, Bal Blair, if you want to go malt whiskey. Um, so the the youngest Bal Blair. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, again, you would use one of the lighter vermouths. That that's a nice fruity style. Um, in ter I mean, in terms of of a uh, blended whiskey, um, I do actually like White and Mackay. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's a very light. You know, like if we had it's the color you, suggests it's going to be heavy, but the, but flavor, that, the yeah, flavor is, no, is very, the, very but, delicate. You know, yeah. if you had that after the one that we had, it would seem very light, but it's Salad, it's yeah. still a it's still a good one, white and Mackay. Um, and you're you're getting closer. To, See, Jimmy likes actually in the spirit of this. I mean, look at the Le <laughs> Lechig. That's it's, no, that's that's a good shout actually, well, Jimmy. That's exact, Le exa Lechig's a good shout. Yeah. Exactly what is what he's I've, saying. <laughs> He's pretending he's not part of it tonight, <laughs> and yet, there you go, Legic 10. But um, please don't. Listen, I, I think that would work, and there is enough weight to the 10-year-old that it would work. The Ben Romack peat smoke that we talked about earlier with the sherry cask, mm -hmm, I think, could, mm -hmm. could potentially aye, work. Aye, aye. Based, this is based on what, what I've enjoyed uh, tonight. Um, that there's, Do you know what? We need to do what Roddy does. Once we get one or two... Rob Roy's or Rod Roy's that we're comfortable with, play with it. Yeah, yeah. Work absolutely. out work yeah. out what we're enjoying. We don't need to kill our bottles of malt by throwing them into juice and coconut milk and very but give up one, just one wee pour, mm -hmm. just to see if it can enhance your enjoyment of the bottle. I think and if you don't, it's fine. But I think that's the takeaway is that this is a good way to enjoy. The uniqueness of the plethora and variety of of, of malt whiskey. Absolutely, it's that Capardonic eighteen would work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that the PT one? Then? It is. It's heavily peated Capardonic eighteen. Uh... Yes. So yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> There's nothing off limits. Well, there are a few things no, no, off no, limits. No, 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 no. no. But I mean, it's 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 that idea to, in order for us to appreciate the whiskey, I think we need to face the monster of giving up the whiskey, of stepping back and realizing that this is a fleeting, ethereal thing. This is not, it's not a right. It's not something that we can demand or be given. It's something that only gives if we are prepared to flirt with it a little bit. Does that make any sense? And only by that, only by making it something that could slip out of reach does it make it more. When you make the perfect, when you find the perfect malt that works with that Rob Roy, mm -hmm. or when you make the perfect mix and work out that the the, the um, I can't remember the brand name of the the coconut rather than using Coco Lopez. Coco Lopez. Mm -hmm. That it's just surely it's almost like that epiphany moment you have with a malt. That can it, it, it's not something you can just grab and pour and get. Mm -hmm. It's something that's fleeting. 
and it's all about being alive, using our senses mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to remind us what it is to be alive. So it's that that perfect alchemy of the cocktail of the moment of the flavor. It's all the flavor, and I I think in particular, like you know, a, 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 you know, you can pour a malt, and you you know you've got a uh, the the little uh, those doodly dads. Yep. Um, <laughs> the glass toppers, ready. Yeah. Glass toppers. <laughs> at the um, and you can you can pour two or three drums, and go back to them over an evening. You know. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and that's flipped and, and change. Uh, yeah. yeah. But a cocktail because it's a nearly always a chilled drink. You know. That's you know you've got this tiny little time frame. Yes. And it, I... and it, it's 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 um. You know, you, you 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 you're just trying to capture it in the moment. And um, um, I was I was talking to you about this this earlier um, about um, uh, Ernest Hemingway's book Death in the Afternoon. You know, he's talking about um, life and art, and and he, he he you know he says that you know the shorthand for art is is concrete things that that persist for hundreds of years like paintings or sculpture yes yeah. but to him and i absolutely agree with him art can be something in the moment as well you know and and you know like, like i've i've had this conversation with other people a bottle of malt whiskey can be art you know and you know if it's a single cask then once you've once you've drunk it it's gone forever and in an even more fleeting sense if you make really good cocktail you know that it's at the right temperature for maybe 15 minutes you know and you it it brings you into the moment you know and you need to face the idea that you know you know it's you might not be able one. to get all these things back together again like, to repeat the same moment yeah what is what is it that rabbi burn says about about the poppy's bloom you know that it's in tamashanter you know the, the snow falls on the river right and you know it's it's gone it's there for an instant then gone forever you know the poppies bloom and as soon as you touch them they fall you know it's, uh -huh. it's the the fragility of them yeah it's the fragility. This is getting remarkably deep i wonder <laughs> if that's if that's a symptom and i've just realized how close i am to the, the center i haven't looked at that one i should move over the, a wee um, bit. i mean it's the, you know maybe maybe it's the drink talking you know but the i i do think that there's there's something about a whiskey which is evanescent and passing yeah and even more so about cocktails you know and you know they also they get us high you know <laughs> well <laughs> i is, you know, i, I do i do pride myself on kind of being careful about the amount of glasses that i put out not not least because it's a thursday night and friday needs to be a functioning day for the, the majority That's it. whiskey with molly but pleasures are like poppy spread you seize the flower it's bloom is shed or like the snowfall in the river, a moment white then melts forever. Thank you, Whiskey with Molly. That's Ben. He's coming here on Saturday. Yeah. I'm going to ask him to do a wee Burns recital for us. Well done, Ben. Fantastic. That's nice. It's very, very cool. Um, Gregor is saying, Aquavidi, can I just see how refreshing it is to have the virtual pub less virtual and see you two together in person? It wasn't until I picked up Roddy tonight and we were chatting and we were in the same car together. And I realized I didn't have a mask on and I immediately said, oh, done an LFT, <laughs> done a lateral flow <laughs> test today. Uh, we're, we're good. Um, and and it's that awkwardness that we're feeling, that anxiety yeah. of coming out of this thing. And it's so my idea for the VPUB and the reason for getting you involved originally in things was that that we could give up sessions to to hang out together and not really have a focused monologue delivery kind of you know, soapbox pulpit type thing, but have much more of kind of just getting together and enjoying it because that's the idea is that, yes, it is a Thursday night and maybe you pick it up on replay and it's Friday morning to you or Sunday afternoon, it doesn't really matter. But it's just that kind of wee pocket of whiskey time, which is fine. But it's nice if we can get together and do things virtually and share what we enjoy about whiskey in order to help other people encourage other people to i think we're privileged i think we're privileged mm -hmm. to live in scotland i think we're privileged to have the access that we do not just to the whiskies but to the stories behind the whiskies mm -hmm. as well and i think that that always comes out when folk 
rather than Roy just standing behind a, a mic. So every now and again, if COVID allows, um, I think we need to do more of this type of thing. I just need to find a way to pay him because <laughs> he doesn't, he turned up with most of his own supplies tonight. He doesn't ever ask for anything for his time. You, you're always, you don't care about what the topic is. You're up for anything. It's very, very cool. It's very cool. And I hope that everybody benefits out of the, when Roddy talks about his 20 plus experiences in, in booze retail, he's not just talking about watching and witnessing that transformation of the malt whiskey landscape over the last 20 years. You've, you're, you're very booze promis promiscuous. You like your wines, you like your champagnes, you like mm -hmm. your different spirits, you like your cider. Uh, cider, absolutely, yes. Eh, aye. Every year you go down, what's it, panking, is it called? Yeah, the, that's one of the processes involved, which is mainly hilarious if you're British, because it, it's a word that can be mistaken for another word, yes. which is a bit rude. Yes. Um, the, what is panking, specifically? So the... So in the context of cider. When you're harvesting apples, the you have a long pole with a hook on the end, and you you find a branch and you sugar it, and the apples fall off. Panking. Yeah, that's panking. And, and it the, doesn't matter if they bruise when they hit the ground. Or... Well, no, the as long as the skin's not cut, bruises are fine because that means the juice comes yeah, out more easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jimmy Legs actually bought us a dram. My goodness, I thought he would be cancelling his, his patron support by now. This has been an almost total horror, but Greg is right. It is fantastic to see you two together again. Cheers to many more nights like this. <laughs> Listen, we will be able to get Roddy in and do things that are legit and, you know, much more analytical and much more kind of focused on, you know, whiskey education stuff. But we need to give up an occasional, at least an annual leap up to just saying, this is whiskey. What else can it do? Mm -hmm. What else can it do? And it can do amazing things. I mean, I, I think... Um, it can make me drink pineapple juice <laughs> and coconut. <laughs> the I think the next one would be like, you know, the perfect junk food to go with whiskey. You know? Oh, my goodness. Oh, dear. I, I, I think I can just about... Well, never say never. No. We we did the we did the whiskey and cheese and the whiskey and iron brew with Phoebe. She came on from um, oh yeah, right, 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 which was great great fun. Um, but a lot of people we we did we managed to to a lot of people saying no, I will never take food. I will never drink food. And uh, sorry, I will never eat food as I drink my whiskey. And it's just the way it's just the way some is. Pay him with Springbank twelve cast strength. His review for that seems to have disappeared. By the way, whiskey woman. The um, yeah, we did we we shut that down for contractual reasons that I can't oh, talk about. Them. Okay. Okay, so that's gone. Yeah. I recorded it. I have a copy. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> Connor Smith is saying, and Roddy, another fantastic VPUB. Can't wait for Breaking Whiskey 2.0. Drew from Arizona. Love Roddy whenever he can be on. Drew, I hope you're doing very well, my friend. It's nice to see you in tonight. I've, I've recognised your wee uh, logo throughout tonight, buddy. Oh, Slankets. Yeah, we need to get Slankets. Oh, I was... Just, I was, I was I was tempted to put a slant, a slanket question in the quiz tonight, <laughs> and I backed off. And I was—I'll uh, give you a clue. It was the Swedish word for a, well, I couldn't say slanket, so it was the Swedish word for sleeping bag. But it, it was something that was—it it just didn't fit with the question. You'll see yeah, later yeah. on. Listen, if you are up for a quiz, there will be a quiz at the end tonight. Roddy has not seen the quiz at all, uh, and you don't need to hold up this, the piece of paper. But I will ask you if you want to participate right, in sure, the quiz. Right. Um, put it this way: the only way he's getting an Uber home. <laughs> It's if he sits through the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> we need the Slanket edition too with Roddy. <laughs> uh, which malt would go well with KFC gravy? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. No, you can't have, don't birth awful ideas. I don't mind organic ideas and good ideas, but fast food and whiskey, no, it's not good. Chris Paul, like I said, Roddy lifts every V pub he is on to a different level. Chris, I agree with you, my friend. Pete Head is Frank is saying Roddy Horror Cocktail. <laughs> Roddy Horror Cocktail Show. But was fun, although cocktails are not in any way up my sleeve yet. Frank. Just, just haven't had a good one yet. That's right. You, you, yeah, if, if Frank had been sat here, he'd have been quite he'd have been purring like a cocktail filled kitten. No problem. I think I think this will would convert a lot of people, you know. Well, I think I think Lynn would like this because she was, she was enjoying it tonight, but she it was a wee bit too close to whiskey for her. Yeah, and she needed more more, more sugar, more sweetness, right? Mm -hmm. But I think this is now at a point where she'd be sitting back, going, "Because I, I, I kind of please, sir, can I have some more?" The 
I doubled the syrup in that. Double from last yeah. time. Double the sugar syrup. Mm -hmm. In order to have the quiz, I need to grab the laptop that was Aye. broadcasting earlier. So, uh, yeah, we're going, we're all, God, he's so you just you just need to interact with this. <laughs> yeah, this one here. He's done it again. He's abandoned me to talk to you guys. Um, uh, oh, jings. All right, so the let's see. Um, Ren says, Aaron, oh no, that's talking to somebody else. Jings. That's quite a shirt. Yes, it is. Thank you. This this is, if you missed that earlier, Christopher, the as a friend and, and customer of mine, that was his lockdown project, was to make these tie-dyes, and I asked him to do a a, a Glen Cairn tie-dye. Sorry, I need to stand up for you to see that. Um, it's really quite something. Um, it looks absolutely <laughs> terrific. I can't I don't know if they're, I'm really impressed how much colour and saturation we have in the shot. Right, let's scooch right. these across. Okay. Move this. But it's a one off then, isn't it? This shot. Uh, they all are. Um, I think, I, I do believe Derek might be taking commissions. The last, the last time somebody asked him about it, he did say he was doing commissions. So. He's, it's, um, how do you uh, put it in the chat? Uh, oh, you type on here. Right, so well, oh, let, let's click on there first. This is why I'm not in charge of the depot. <laughs> right. um, there you go. Right, so the... We do. We are having a quiz at the end tonight. Uh, I think tonight's quiz at the end, honestly speaking, just to add insult to injury, is going to be quite tricky tonight. I think it's not going to be the easiest one that we've enjoyed in the past. There are some uh, banana skin skins. Although the ass hat itself, I think, is quite mild. Let's see how we go on. Oh. Sideburn, that's, oh, that's his Twitter handle, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you want, if you wanted a tie dye, <laughs> you I've broken the V pub again. No, I'm sorry, no, don't worry, don't worry at all. Mm. Now let's see if we can get this up on screen here. Um, take that, click there, do that, go to here, do that, and I should have it here. I have no. Idea. Ah. There we go. Quiz right. at the end. James. Right. Let's really let's piss Jimmy leg right off. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, we're not intending to piss you off whatsoever. This is our leftover ice cubes. Since I think this is going to make no difference whatsoever, you t you pick your ice cube, and I'll pick my ice cube. Let's drop it in. This is what we're going to. We do this so no one else should ever have to do it. You pick the malt and I'll pick the mixer. Yeah, you maybe want to not go too high. Or no, it doesn't need to be malt, it could be a bourbon. Um this has been in the fridge. I chilled this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roddy's not expecting this at all. If you're going to put iron brew in whiskey, it has to be this iron brew. This is the old and unimproved. This is before, you know, everybody decided to to really break it. Um, um, this tastes like childhood to me. Right, so we need we need a good standard malt that we can use. Not just a standard malt, not a bourbon, not a world whiskey. Well, a can Cotswolds we... English whiskey. Cotswolds and Iron Brew, it's almost, right. that's just, just maybe a step two for that. Wait, is it? So this is all uh, bourbons, uh, Kentucky bourbons, American whiskey, world whiskeys, Japanese, oh, European gosh. Irish, uh, Campbelltown. Oh, oh, so you do want to do the Cotswolds? Sure. <laughs> okay. Cotswolds and Iron Brew. Okay, the flack that I'm going to take, the social okay. media is going to be lit with anger tomorrow. How do you get your... Uh, just get my face out of it for a bit, and it should put that right up centre. It should focus once it doesn't see a face. Doesn't, doesn't Come on, show us the, the people know that it's Cotswolds. They can see that it's Cotswolds. 
No, oh, well, what the heck? Right, you need, you need, you need to do it. Coswell's ah, Odyssey Barley. Uh, this is 2017. Look how quickly I've got through this. The last one I had was the 2015. Do, do you enjoy this? I'm not. I've tasted samples, but I don't really know it at all. Less than 40 pounds. New distillery. English whiskey. It's just terrific. Just terrific. Uh, mm. I'll let you pour the, the whiskey and I'll pour the, the ginger. <laughs> Gins. Crivens. Help, Help my bob. bob. I feel like Jack and Victor now. <laughs> even Jack and Victor would be in conniptions about <laughs> what we are doing right now. I don't even care that that's English malt. That's malt that they're ruining. Would you, would you, is that about right or would you fancy a wee bit more? Brew, no. That's about right. I think that's that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll skip the quiz at the end today. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> things. Glenn things Anderson are. is. <laughs> Screw that one. I uh, had to try my favourite distillery, Chininic and Tonic, and it was very different and some kind of good. Oh, oh, that's, that's interesting. That is interesting. See the lemony fizz. That's aye, the Chininic's aye. a naturally effervescent malt. So to try it with tonic, wow. Maybe after we after the credits, we'll try. That's fantastic, Glenn. Anyway, for our final dram tonight, as we close out the quiz at the end, a Cotswolds English in an English Irish English. <laughs> We did say we would break whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Smells like brew. Well, oh, I can smell them all, so. Well, that's really. Oh. That's really interesting, actually. Because that's that. That's... I had my line pre planned, and my line was that is doing the malt and Diane Bruno favours. No, no, that's, that's really, really interesting. But that. That is. <laughs> Jimmy Legacy and it looks like Bamor. <laughs> it's glowing. That is a kind of scary colour, isn't it? Yeah. What if Ralphie's watching? <laughs> Tell me well, this. because it's, it's like it's like Ralphie the, would be okay with it. Everything. That's really... I mean, you can smell the brew, but you can smell the malt's coming through. And there's there's a kind of a... Everwind is asking if iron brews is ginger ale. Mm. This, is, this is remarkably... Why does that shouldn't make sense? I, I fully thought that I would be making something tonight that would be appalling, and I'd need to endure as I went through the quiz at the end. That's really interesting, though. That that's like the, what is that flavour? I'm thinking like a sarsaparilla type thing, like a, but the, yeah, but so it's like it's not the standard sticks, like. It's not the standard iron brew flavor, like it, like because iron brew is quite a dominating flavor. You know, it's it's a weird strong flavor, but that's the fl that's, famously the flavor that you can't define, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's, it's not orangey and it's 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 not sweeties. <laughs> <laughs> Ralphie would be fine with this. Is is there a Ralphie emoji? There's a Ralphie emoji. <laughs> if you're know. a barfly, there's a Ralphie emoji. Ah. Yes, yes. Just use it, Roy. This is bargain, Jim. It's no bargain. I, I have to say, it's. I, I, I it's, thought I would be saying, regardless of what whiskey Roddy picked, I thought that I would be saying this doesn't do the whiskey any good and it doesn't do the and brew any good. Well, I, I mean, I'm I'm not saying right. So it's a bit sweet. It's and it's got a kind of confected thing to it, but. There is the, a the drumsticks in there. Yeah, the, there is a flavour in there that is not iron brew and is not malt whiskey, and that's just super interesting. What is it though? Hey, there are six barflies coming to my house on Saturday to raise funds for for Luca. Um, Make them drink iron brew. And I have to say, if they're interested, I will I will let them have because this isn't normal iron brew. This is the nineteen oh one, which is a very specific um, and natural sorry, natural. <laughs> I'm getting carried away now. But it's a much more it tastes like the iron brew I used to enjoy when I was a kid. That's mm -hmm. what it tastes like mm -hmm. to me. Um, and I don't drink iron brew, but I have I love nineteen oh one iron brew. Whiskey and Lucasade, hangover cure. Hi, you might be right, Helen. You might be right. Anyway, everybody strap in for the quiz at the end. We've kept you all long enough on this say, ridiculous but very, very interesting, enjoyable wee journey here. Strap in because this might be a wee bit trickier. Are you ready, Roddy? 
What's optional, old? always optional. Don't mm -hmm. share your scores if you don't want to. Just play along and have a wee bit of fun with it. Multiple choice. Question one. Scott Form, that should be from, I apologise, Scottish Death Dummies, has retired after 29 years as a police officer, but has started a new ambassador role. Ambassador role? Where's our rocks glasses? Did you take them away? Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Oh, yeah. With which brand? So this is amazing because this is a guy who has bought a gift of Johnny Walker Black, 12-year-old, from his wife. I don't even drink scotch. Why have you bought me this? And then a few years later, they've got a YouTube channel, him and his buddy together, mm -hmm. doing whiskey sharing. We, we, we remember the amazing tasting that yes. he had at the Good Spirits oh, yeah. Company yeah. that had you in conniptions about. <laughs> but what a wonderful day. It just it was an incredible day. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's now retired. And instead of kind of scratching his chin or whatever else he could scratch, he's gone off and started a new career. Mm -hmm. Fair play to you, Scott. Is it A, Iron Root Distilling, B, McMira, C, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society? Who is Scott now an ambassador for? A, Iron Root Distilling in Texas, McMira in Sweden, or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society? A hailing from Edinburgh, I would suppose. I'm going to go with E. You think it's Iron Root? Do you? You are having to throw a dart at that board? Here? Yeah, that, this, is, this is a guess. If you're going to guess, look at the lounge. All <laughs> oh, right, okay. Right. Do you, would you like to change your mind? No, that's fine. I'll, I'll stick to E. <laughs> As, of course, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, the announcement came out this week. Uh, him and Ben did an outturn review. Uh, it's all over social media. I have to say, I am really, really pleased, and I hope that it works out well for him. But secretly, I'm hoping that it means that he gets trips back to Scotland uh... and we get to hang out a wee bit more together. Congratulations, Scotty. I hope it does very, very well for you. Question two. Highland Park have released whiskies sharing names with characters from which movie franchise? <laughs> Wait, do you see the answers? <laughs> Highland Park have released whiskies with names that, share, that, that are the same as characters from which movie franchise? A, Star Wars. Jar Jar Binks, 12-year-old. B, Justice League. <laughs> Batman Blend. <laughs> C, Marvel Avengers. The Iron Brew Man. <laughs> Iron Brew Man. Um, Highland Park have released whiskies sharing names with characters from which movie franchise? Highland Park are prolific. Dizzyingly prolific. Now, I'm a whiskey enthusiast. I would go as far to say I'm a whiskey geek. You're a whiskey retailer. Mm -hmm. Can you keep up with what Highland Park put out? It's really tough. It's difficult. No, the um, and we're we're too small for them to. C C C C C C C C C C P head complete guess C. <laughs> um, sorry, you're gone. You're too small for for Edrington. For yeah, Park. yeah, yeah. So the we don't really like I drink. Indie bottlings of Highland Park. Yes, that's I well. That's what you buy if you want to get really don't something. really drink. So Maxim, is it? Yeah, yeah, Maxim, yeah. Yes. Um, and oh, Mike is right. They they missed the Game of Thrones opportunity. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Diageo beat them to the to the that idea. Absolutely, the lounge is absolutely right. What would you guess? I have no idea. It's, well, if I told you if it was Loki and Thor. It's the Avengers, Marvel right. Avengers, okay. Loki and Thor. Uh, 2012 to 2014, they had a couple of expressions out, Loki and Thor. Oh, sorry. That's right. Jay Francis is saying, undisclosed they Orkney. Were, they were not anything to do with the movies, though. Who, Loki and Thor? Yeah. The Highland yeah. Park ones. Oh, no, no, no. The, the, there's no there's no official kind of agreement between Highland Park and, and Marvel. No. It's just pure coincidence. Right. That through the Viking heritage right. thing, they started to roll out more and more of this kind of uh -huh, the, uh -huh. This, because remember the, the the best of those I thought was the one called Freya. Oh, aye, aye, aye. Um, I remember that. I remember it. I, I remember that I couldn't afford it more than anything. Yes, the, I forget how I got to taste it, but the they were interesting drums. Yeah, but the at silly prices, as you say, and the triangular glass bottles and the yeah, plinths, yeah, the wooden yeah, plinths and things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Little did we know that was Silent Park just. Just starting <laughs> out, just getting into their stride. If you answered C, Marvel Avengers, Loki and Thor, absolutely correct. Bunavan have released a 12-year-old cast strength. Which other brand has a core 12-year-old and a 12-year-old cast strength? 
not as many as you might imagine. Jeans. Yeah. So we're looking for a core 12 year old and a core 12 year old cast strength. Is it A, Springbank, B, Glengoyne, C, Redbreast? Next week on the VPUB, it'll be all about cast strength whiskies. It'll be talking about the reason for cast strength, why cast strengths even exist, what cast strengths you might consider going for, how we can compare them to other releases from the core ranges, all of that kind of thing. And I have to be honest with you, it's fully inspired by the recent release of Buna Havin's 12 year old cast strength. Mm -hmm. um, so there you go. Mistakes were made. <laughs> <Since Jimmy Lake. laughs> Listen, thank you all for being so indulgent, good sports. Um, but I have to say, I've enjoyed every, there is no, I, I'm not going to leave tonight thinking, I wish I hadn't done any of it. <laughs> Honestly, I think it all is just good fun. So this is C, isn't it? Jimmy Legg is saying it seems like 10 Cs might work. I think there is not a tack sharper than Jimmy Legg. Do you know that? <laughs> Jimmy, spot on. Redbreast, yes. Redbreast 12, 40% ABV, but they also have a 12-year-old cast strength. Springbank, of course, have a 10-year-old um, at 46%, but they, they have the 12-year-old cast strength, famously Roddy's favourite whiskey. Mm. Um, many people's favourite whiskeys, uh, if you look at the only Scotch Whiskey it, Awards, yeah, 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 if you can get it. And Glengoyne, they do have a cast strength release, not any statement, and that changes batch to batch. Question four, which of these brands often display an animal head motif? On their corks. It's a good question. Ooh. A. Balcones in Texas. B. Bimber in London. C. Tomatin in the Highlands. Which of those brands often displays? And I said often because there are releases out there. It would seem that they don't have it. But I would say on ninety nine percent of their releases, there is a heat of an animal on the cork. Mm -hmm. Is it Balcones? in Texas, Bimber in London, or Tomatin in the Highlands. Is it another, the, this, the lounge seems to think unanimously it's another CE. I think there's going to be lots of five out of fives tonight, or let's say four out of fours. Uh, oh, look, at that, look at the emoji that Roland's pulled out. That should help you. A wolf. Oh, it's a, a boar. boar, yeah. It's a hog's head. Mm. The, I, I'm guessing, so I'm going to go B. B for Bimber. Bimber. There's Bimber there, all over the shelf. See the eagle's head? Oh. Ah, it's a good reaction. No, I don't know. Balcones has a star, Lone Star State. Right. Tomatin has a hog's head on its corpse. Oh. Very much like that emoji, Roland. Well done. I didn't even mm. know that emoji existed. If anybody's interested in emojis, there's lots of kind of fun emojis. If you join the Barflies as a member of the YouTube channel, you can support things here and keep it ad free. There are no ads on this broadcast. So you can drop in and out, watch your podcast style. You never need to sit through an ad. Thank you so much to all the Barflies who support me. Four out of four, four out of four, four out of four, four out of four. Amazing. Ben Whiskey with Molly, despite his Burns knowledge, is only on a 50%. You're still on a pass mark, Ben. Looking forward to seeing you Saturday. Question five is always a picture image. Here we go. Derelict. Not a very welcoming sight. Heart-wrenching even, right? What distillery are we looking at? A, Convalmore. B, Pettyvach. C, Parkmore. I think everybody can work out that things are starting to get a wee bit trickier on the back nine. Mm -hmm. Well done, everybody, for the big scores on the way out. The Hogsheads on four out of four as well. Whiskey Novice Jim celebrating his 50th with Full House, four out of four. Well done, Jim. Scott Pascoe, four out of four. Jason McDonald, four out of four. Tremendous. Daniel Williams is suggesting Ralphie on a cork. <laughs> no more pineapple for you. <laughs> <laughs> Still got a wee bit. Aye. Still got a wee bit. But I think Anne Brew is taking the, the shine that's, away. That, that's actually really uh, interesting. Yeah, it's, so it's not, maybe, maybe it's more about the time of the night rather than the... No, I, I think there is a flavour in there that was unexpected. But this still tastes very, very good. Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't, it's not attractive to look no, at. No, it's, it's split. Yeah, it's which split. I think is because, yeah. because I had to yep. sub out the Coco Lopez. But back to back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shots. 
we there is that was the only thing we couldn't touch mm -hmm. tonight. We agree with mm -hmm. that. Yeah, no shots. Shooting anything is that. What's the point? I mean, you're on a mission, and there's yes, yeah. it's not yeah, maybe. So that's in the middle of Duff Town. So I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be grass at the back of it. That's not there anymore. That's like a car park. So it must be A. I like the way you think, Roddy. Absolutely, Convo Moore. Interestingly, Convo Moore is still, I mean, it's derelict and it's pretty sad to look at, but it's never going to be brought back to life because the property, the distillery is owned by Grants and the brand Convo Moore is owned by Diageo. And uh, Grants use it as warehousing space mm -hmm. and they are not permitted to make any whiskey. Yeah at the distillery on site, which is uh, tragic. But I think it's only tragic because it's one of those whiskies that we get to taste at 40 years old now, so it's going to be terrific, right? Yeah. We, we yeah. could have never really understood it in its youth. Certainly, I couldn't. Um, but I think that's there's a sadness to that image, mm -hmm. and a, there's a kind of romance and sadness and, and all of those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but Parkmore is still standing. Pity Vech, you're absolutely right, was a bolt on to the side of Dufton, Dufton distillery. Yeah, it's, it's, it, but it's, I think it's just like hard standing for lorries and things now. Yes, so it's, it's Pity Vech is long gone, um, although you can still buy the whiskies uh, mm -hmm. relatively inexpensively. Question six, banana skin, potentially. Sandy Grant Gordon died in December 2020 at 89 years old. But what was Sandy most famous for? Sandy Grant Gordon. A, selling malts to Italy. B, catapulting McAllen as a brand. C, selling Glenfiddich malt to the world. This is when the, the home straight starts to get a bit crunchy <laughs> underfoot. It's going to get trickier now. Five out of five for Mike Molasses. Well done. Bimo, four out of four. Superb Glenn Anderson, four out of five. Sugar Kitty, four out of five. The question picture seemed to trip a few up. The Hogsheads, four out of five. Ebhead Rolf, buddy, it's so good to see you, and I'm so excited to be hanging out with you in Frankfurt in a couple of times. Yeah, sorry, a couple of weeks' time. It's so good to be able to look forward to meeting people again. Too slow. <laughs> Rob is saying, What? <laughs> the best whiskey with tonic is Chinenic. Glenn Anderson is, is trying to convince us here. He's persuaded by that. Well, we need to yeah. get, we maybe give it a wee bash. We'll try it. See how we do. Check the social medias afterwards. Okay, everyone. I think, do you have to guess here or do you have an inkling about uh, Sandy Grant Gordon? Um, based on his middle name, I'm going with A. Banana skin. Trips you up. Yes, that's why it's in there. The Grant yeah. thing. And of course, Glenn Grant selling to Italy and all the rest of it. I can understand that. Catapult and McAllen, the famous uh, limited marketing budget to put the adverts next to the Times crossword. But no, Sandy Grant Gordon is actually the gentleman who took Glenn Firrick to the world in the early 60s. He left his brother Charles to build the distilleries yeah. back at home. Fascinating story. I am so gutted. That he died last year. Mm -hmm. I think he would have been just an incredible guy to talk to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Incredible guy to talk to. But there you go. He was responsible for selling Glenfiddich to the world back in the early 60s. Sandy Grant Gordon. Yes, six out of six says Steve Atkiss. Well done, you. Seven. Springbank is unique as a Scottish single malt distiller in that they malt all of their own barley. A, true. B, false. There's another. C, false. There are a few. Do you see how the questions are not just out questions? They're, mm -hmm. they're intended to make you think about things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. Uh, <laughs> this is interesting to me. All is the word in that question that you need to focus on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Roddy, you should get a job at a whiskey shop. <laughs> Says Jimmy, like, you can learn so much more about whiskey. <laughs> ben, whiskey with Molly, saying he kept a note of how much money he spent when dating his wife. Bloody hell. Oh, the typical Scott then, <laughs> or as the story goes. Would you be guessing this one? I have to say um, I'd, I'd be guessing this one until they, I made this question. Um, this question would have been easier to answer in the past. 
There's, I'm just, I'm running my uh, mind over all the new weed distilleries. Aye, well, um, Oklahoman partial maltings, yeah. But the the key word is all. So all there's, there's, all the malt. There's quite that's, a few that malt some barley. Yeah, that's right. Lafroy, Bamore, Colhoman, Balvenie, Benriac. Oh, did they shut their malt and floor down? Or they I, brought it back I to life? They were, I think they were bringing it back. Benriac. Um, um, but this is this is the all is the crucial word here. Um, Roland is switching to A. The whiskey scout thinks it's B. There's another, but. Um, Falscraft is hmm, B. Yeah, switch to B, says Falscraft. Excuse me. That's that big pineapple and coconut burp. Just, excuse me, nobody I'm, needed to know I'm, that. I'm going to go with B. B. Um, and I'm thinking that the other one is Nicknean. Glen Hort. Oh, bugger. It's, it's just it slips in, isn't it? It's like they're making so much malt for everybody else. So I said B, but I got that for the wrong reason. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, does does Nicknean even have a malting floor? They do have a. They must. They must be doing their own malt. Well, now that you've said that, I don't know. Yeah. The, I, so it's, yeah. The, well, it's Glenord. Glenord is is uh, one of the biggest maltings in the Highlands. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they only supply. No, they may supply outside of the Azure Group. I don't know. Um, but of course, they then supply all the malt for their own needs. Mm -hmm. So Springbank is. Uh, I mean, it's Springbank is still unique. For, for what they're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and the, the Glen Ord thing is an incidental thing. The, right, should we look up Nicknean? Uh, I've got the malt whiskey yearbook I always have it on hand, but I don't know if it'll tell you. Nicknean. Yeah. Similar. There is a wash still. Botanical spirits. No, don't know. No. So, a right well, answer for the wrong reasons. I'll let you study that while I go into question eight mm -hmm. for the, the lounge. Which of these is not, not is the important word in this question, a high coast expression? Not a current high coast expression. High coast is a distillery that used to be known as box distillery, but they're now known as high coast. Is it A, have, or have? I don't know. My pronunciation might go out the window here. B, cool, cool, don't know. C, ulv, <laughs> have, cool, ulv. One of these is not a current high coast expression. For the Swedes in tonight, if there are any of you still here, yeah, this might be a wee bit easier for you. Jimmy Leg is high coast. Yeah, box distillery, Jimmy. They're doing uh, some of it's non ish statement, most of it's non ish statement, if not all. 46% uh, ABV, but I have to say they have uh, captivated me. I have liked everything in recent times I've tried from high coast. Mm. Would you be guessing? Throw a dart. Well, no, I have no uh, idea. B. B. Kula <laughs> is Swedish for hell, and there is no expression from so well done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what your score is, but no. it's just got one better. My, my score um, is very poor tonight. <laughs> che is saying, I love one of those expressions. Uh, share with us what it is, Che. Peter is saying, uh, Olv is pronounced Elv. Elv. Uh, okay, Elv. Sorry. Sorry, my friend. Sorry, Frank. <laughs> Frank isn't Swedish. He's Dutch, but clearly he knows a hell of a lot more about pronunciation of uh, Swedish than I do. Question nine, a barflies question. This would help you. You'll be helped, assisted here if you are a member of the Aquaviti Barflies Facebook page. Success. Do you watch Succession? No. I watch it, but I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Succession's Brian Cox is set to star in a new production featuring a fictitious malt distillery called what? Now, Brian Cox is famously the guy who did pronunciation on YouTube before that Glaswegian dude <laughs> started to do it. This is Brian Cox, the the large beardy one. Not yes, the, not, not the, the scientist guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not the ex drummer of... What was Prime? No, it wasn't Prime Scheme. He was a Manchester band. Mm. Wasn't he? It doesn't matter. There's another... Brian Cox... The actor who was in Succession, who is in Succession, but he's a he's I think he's a one off. I think he's a movie rather than a series, but he's doing a a, a production based on a, a fictitious Scotch distillery. But what's it called? A, Ocherargi, 
B, <laughs> Ben Brockel, or C, Glen Rothen. Oh, jeez. That's terrible. It's just a mash of whiskey <laughs> things, isn't it? It's going to be... Glen Sugal. I, I set this question and I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> Ochter <Ochter-clodgy>. Clodgy. <laughs> <laughs> ben Clinchy. <laughs> oh my goodness. But again, the lounge is like, yeah, yeah, got it. Got it covered. So what were you gonna go with, Roddy? <laughs> Dream. That's right, Danny. Dream, but the Brian Cox, the Manchester is was Dream. Jeez. The Did the Things Can Only Get Better song. That's right, Jim. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. What are you gonna guess then? Uh B. Ben Brockle. Sorry, look at the lounge. What, what are you going to guess? <laughs> All right, C. C. <laughs> Glenn Rothen, absolutely. It's going to be a story about how he, he's not going to own his family and the distillery has to survive, and it's all very predictable. Oh, but I'll watch yeah. it because there's a whiskey element to it. Excellent stuff. So let's see how we're getting on before we hit the ASAC question. How are the scores doing? Um, let's share your scores with us all. Uh, <laughs> it's Ocher Argy, but that name is owned by another company. <laughs> <laughs> C would be too close to a real name and would be sued. B, no, Glenn, it is Glenn Roth. Glenn Berge. Ah, he's thinking of Glenn Roth. Sorry. Brian Cox would pronounce uh, uh, Kalila like Kalila. Uh, I have to be honest that Brian Cox, as much as I love him in succession and stuff, I mean, I don't know what he's like as a real guy. He's probably a bam. I don't know, but... Um, one of the motivations for me to make the pronunciation videos with that horrible, horrible loud music that I would delete in an instant if I could, however, was was Brian Cox's videos because he was pronouncing these distilleries. I think I have literally never heard anybody pronounce it that way, and Kalila was one of them. Kalila or something, or Kalila, or I can't even remember how he, but he did butcher it, and I was like, nobody says it like that, not even the people in Isla or... Yeah. Right. Not even the people, and nobody says it that way. So it was bizarre, and I was like, "This, this is misinformation manifest, right?" Do, do, so, do, do you think he was like you know how actors, Scottish actors of that age, they have that terrible sort of yes, the BBC English, uh-huh. the received Scots, yeah, yes, yes that's it, yeah, yes. yeah that, that weird Scots yeah. that that yeah. nobody that's not, and and also I think that we because we know where we've come from. If somebody had presented us with a script at some point in our time telling us that that's how you say Kalila, you'd have just said it that way without question. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, because of a certain route that our life took, Mm -hmm. that's not how you pronounce Kalila, and I'm not saying it. Um, uh, But, 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 you know, there are things. I mean, now I am the pronunciation police, but there is no... The only way that... the only way to pronounce something properly is if it's a given name. Roddy is only ever going to be Roddy. You're never going to be Raddy or... I mean, I do, an, or, I do answer to most things. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of be a bit laid back about it. Um, but you the, can't force it down people's... You can't te- you can't demand that it's pronounced the right way in order to be served a drink or anything. The continental people struggle with my name, actually. I, I, when I've been abroad, I quite often get called Rudy. Instead of Roddy? Yeah. Rudy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And French people in particular, the, the surname Graham, they cannot say because of the h yeah it's like gram gram well but that's true in america that they, they have a biscuit or a we sorry a cookie or a cracker <laughs> called, well they don't say graham's crackers it's gram's crackers right is that how it's pronounced yeah gram's crackers yeah I if, know that. Okay. so if, if there are probably some americans still in but gram's crackers yeah is your surname and Real. interestingly when i said raddy i mean that's like an american saying yeah. roddy right raddy raddy i don't know that's Anyway, yeah. Brian Cox right, was focus, doing pronunciation on, on YouTube before me. I, I didn't pay any attention to the scores. Let's see. We're looking for nine out of nines. Chris Pollack on seven. Sid Martin on eight. Whiskey Steve with Molly Ben. Atkins. Steve Atkins on nine out of nine. Killing it tonight, Gavel Steve. Connor. Gavel Connor on nine. Six guesses. <laughs> Killing it. Absolutely. My Jammy. goodness. Falsgraf on eight. Malt Minion Chuck on seven. Too Slow Rob on seven. Hell's Wed on seven. Eb Hedroff on five past mark, he's made it. BMO on six at a nine, he's celebrating superb. Whiskey Radar on eight at a nine. There's, there's very few nine at a nines. I'm, I'm a wee bit surprised, but not really because I deliberately made it a wee bit crunchy tonight. Let's go for the asset, which isn't a true asset tonight, but it is tricky nonetheless. The last time there were three Campbelltown distilleries was 1934. 
before, up, right up until Kilcair mm -hmm. and Glengyle mm -hmm. opened, okay, in 2005, 2004, Four. 2004, Four. when which distillery closed? Hodger Wiest. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Was that too slippy for you? Did I feel as if I know that. <laughs> Was it A, Hazelburn? <laughs> B, Glen Gyle? <laughs> or C, Reich Lachen? <laughs> Anybody that, or if the mic was sensitive <laughs> enough to, to pick up, might mean that this is the least asshatty the asshat question has been for a long time. But it isn't a traditional asshat question. It's a genuine, difficult question, I think. Um, and I think that your depth of knowledge just yeah, betrayed you there. And, uh, one one glass man is saying, see, question mark. Campbelltown uh, history is not my strength. It's a false graph. It's not mine either, my friend. Um, but I was considering, you know, the success of uh, of Cochran recently. I've just, you know, oh, probably there was a lot of should we or shouldn't we, should we or shouldn't we. And now they're thinking we should have done it three, two or three times over, mm -hmm. right? Because Spring Bank is, is difficult to buy, but Cochran is every bit as difficult to buy these days. Mm -hmm. And here is us just grabbing it from the shelf and throwing it over ice because Mike Molasses thought that it may be something that he wouldn't want to do with his. Whiskey obviously saying, did, did Roddy just say Reich Lachen? <laughs> no, no. Whiskey no. Central is saying, total guess. <laughs> Listen, take it, take it, take it to the bank. Absolutely. Hazel Byrne and Glen Gyle had already closed down in 1925, but Reich Lachen kept on going until 1934, and right up until Kilcarran opened again in 2004, which is incredible. There were only two distilleries, and sometimes none. It was often down to one, but but in the 1980s, actually, there were there were no distilleries producing whiskey in Campbelltown, and we're so grateful for. Uh, the inevitable uh, onslaught of renaissance that we're going to see <laughs> down in that wee corner of Scotland. I hope so. I hope so. Did anybody make an 8 out of 10 tonight? Did it actually happen? Let's have a wee look to see. 9 out of 10 for Roland Whiskey Radar. Superb. And Andrew Butler, you star. I've still got your samples there. Did a wee spring cleanup in the V-Pub recently and found your box uh, in a Kilcarran uh, tasting box, interestingly enough. A fully intact Andrew. I'm looking forward to getting a wee look at that. And uh, it reminded me I need to try them out. Uh, False graph, nine out of ten. Thank you, crowd. <laughs> well, you've got to be honest. Um, I think it might have helped Roddy <laughs> a wee bit tonight as well. Um, Gav O'Connor, ten out of ten for the first time ever, albeit with six guesses and a hand from Roddy. Steve Atkiss as well. Oh my god, I got ten out of ten, Steve Atkiss. Tremendous stuff. Superb, Steve. And molasses. 10 out of 10, fully crowdsourced, but I'm totally <laughs> taking it, absolutely. So that's three, Gav O'Connor, Steve Atkiss, Molasses, Mike, 10 out of 10. And, and he's still, Steve Atkiss is still celebrating. That's terrific. I thought this was going to be a crunchy quiz tonight, and that was quite crunchy. There was some I th interesting I think I questions. Got five or maybe six out of 10. Nah, yeah, you got a pass mark. You got a pass mark just for turning up, Roddy. <laughs> Listen, uh, you've drained your hand brew, have you? I was enjoying that. That was a really interesting drink. That's terrific. The, I don't know what I don't know what that flavour is, but there's something in there that is not the brew and not the malt. You know, there's something going on there. It's interesting. It, it is. It's, I'm like, not, a, it's I'm not, like a confectionery sweet sarsaparilla thing. It's like an ice cream float. It's like that kind of bizarre thing when the something happens with ice cream and the the acidity of the soda and the creaminess of I don't know the fat comes together that's the, what it mm -hmm, reminds me of mm -hmm. that's why it's making me think of things like drumsticks and you know confectionery that can be creamy at the same time I don't know mm -hmm. but there's nothing creamy in this there's nothing creamy it well, was um it could have been terrible and it wasn't Let's have a wee look to see if we've actually made any dent in this wee fundraiser tonight. It was at 54% 2719. Let's refresh this. Oh my God, you stars. 64%, uh, £3,234 on that thumb raiser. I am, you guys are amazing. I, I promise you that that bottle of Compass Box and that bottle of Glasshouse Whiskey will make it, as long as I can ship it to you legally, I'll put it into your hands. If I cannot do that, I'll send you a wee Aqua VT care package and I'll pick out names at random. Chief Francis already won uh, the Roddy Rodroy uh, tonight uh, and I'll ship that down to you, Che, as well. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, thank you for tonight. Thank you for helping us celebrate this. 
being able to get back in the same space together and bring a broadcast to you where it's not just me and it's not just remote dialing in. And as much fun as all of that is, eh, I would like to do more of this, Roddy Graham. What do you say? Aye, it was fun. It was fun. You've got nothing left to drink. You're some kind of star. Have you got... What would you like? Yeah. I tell you what I'm going to pour for you, my friend. I tell you what I'm going to pour. Well, he's done it again. He's walked off and left me. No, no, to the no, screen. no, no. Um, where's the big red button? I yeah. was actually going to pour you a long row 18, but <laughs> it's up at the cocktail <laughs> shelf. So instead, I will pour you a long row distillery exclusive. So you've got the ability to raise a wee glass as a toast to everybody for hanging out with us for a very bizarre but nonetheless enjoyable topic. I don't think we broke whiskey. I think tonight we fortified it. I think Mm -hmm. it's a wonderfully flexible, robust thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do what we did tonight. We understand if you don't want to. But rest assured, if you do, you might raise an eyebrow or two. (laughs) That lob... Rob Lobroy, Robroy, Lobroy. That's <laughs> another new drink. That, Jimmy Leg is but a jam. I was actually really fun to be angry all night. <laughs> Thanks. That, that, that Rob Roy, uh, that was good. That, that that is a good drink. You know, that was the, the that was the killer of tonight. Yeah, you, you started nice. very very strong. Yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And even was we got serendipity that made you oh, uh, switch the, but it was perfect. It, it worked. Yeah, Absolutely it work, perfect yeah. for tonight. Glenn Anderson is saying, Ilsa Bay do 100% malting as well. Ilsa Bay? Jings. This is, this is Scotch whiskey. So it's Garvin. It's so Garvin. hard to keep up with. Gar- the grain complex in Garvin. It's got maltings. I, I, did you know such no. a thing? Glenn, um, and Glenn, it looks like Glenn's in Norway. Mm-hmm. And this is why, this the knowledgeable lounge. Aye, aye, aye. Hey, I'm going to have a wee look. I think we'll both have a wee look. But if it is, and you answered that wrong, Glenn, take the point. Take the point in the quiz. Listen, thank you all very, very much for joining us and for a very thank laid you. back and relaxed and enjoyable uh, breaking whiskey V pub tonight. Um, I've had an absolute blast. I think it might be blatantly <laughs> obvious <laughs> to everybody. Listen, thank you all. I will see you all very, very soon next week. It's all about cast strength whiskies. Despite the strength and the ABV of those whiskies, I'll be much more careful than I have been tonight. I look forward to welcoming you then. And until then, I wish you all the very best. You're all dearly loved. Slunchava. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.